What's up, YouTube? Hello, everybody. Uh, slightly late today. We and Ryan were just chatting away about <laughs> nonsense. And then Ryan was like, oh, we should, we should start now. Shouldn't we? I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah. I didn't but we made it all my, we made it one minute late so less, less than a minute late so uh but anyway hello everybody uh hello youtube hello spotify hello apple podcasts and all the various other little weird podcast places uh prestige reef talk show i'm alex reef talk with me as always is uh ryan from the uk's number one coral selling website prestige reef.co.uk ryan how are you i'm good how are you I am all right. I'm better than I was this morning, as I was saying earlier. Oh, yeah. You had a, a disaster this morning, didn't you? Not tank related, <laughs> but how could have been tank related? It could have been. Oh, God. Imagine if, I it if was. the power went out. The power did go out. It tripped it. Oh. So I'll, I'll explain what happened. So the, I, I just I was sat on the sofa. Fortunately, I got up early this morning. I was sat up on the sofa at half past seven and I suddenly heard this noise coming from the kitchen. I ran out to the kitchen and there was mains pressure water spewing everywhere <laughs> and it was hot water as well i didn't mention that it was hot water i didn't know it was hot water and so i had to I, for about five minutes i was trying to t turn off all the isolation valves and eventually i found the one that was so the one at the front that lets water into the house that didn't shut it off <laughs> so I, but I found another one and, and stopped it but my, but that did trip the electric so my tank went out and it's do you know what actually battery backups i'll ask you about this because my yeah. my main tank has got an ecotech battery backup um, and I find it really satisfying when it's the tank is completely still, apart from this gentle uh, water movement from the battery backup, because it's like 50% power. I yeah. just find it, it's really relaxing watching that. Never really um, noticed, if I'm honest, because my, my tanks are lower flow than your ones usually, aren't they? So you, you normally have like really, really turbulent surface. Whereas when you were at my house the other day, you went, is, have you got enough flow in on? there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah it's, but it's funny because someone came to my house today to pick up some corals and he said the same about my my, my so my tank at, at the time in the morning it's it looks relatively still and then there are other time other time points of the day when it's really really um turbulent like loads of water movement and it was yeah. fa fairly still but he was like well, you've not got much water movement have you and he had on a three foot tank he had four mp40s and i think he had two gyres as well <laughs> wow wow um, so I wonder how the coral farm copes with just two mp40s on <laughs> no. one end yeah i know uh but um i so it's it's i don't i don't like so my power heads i have my mp40s running at about 90 percent, but i've turned them down lately because i've moved a load of my corals up um and it's uh i'm, I'm looking forward to when i've got them in a new tank hopefully being running at about 60 percent, maybe 50 percent uh, and I'm hoping they'll be a bit quieter because uh, when you turn them up full blast, yeah. they're quite not. I only ha I, I don't want them at 100 percent because they're too noisy. So I back them off to like 80, 90. So I'm hoping they might be a little bit quieter if they're 50 percent or something. You run them at 80 or 90. I'm going to run at 50 percent on a six foot tank, and there's only yeah. two of them. And I got four. Yeah, for that. Yeah. And the uh, fish when they see in front of them, they do this. Yeah. <laughs> so your fish must be like permanently on a like a a um in like a whirlpool. The, the, so there are two fish that swim up next to it the the cold white tailed cold tang and the the two barred rabbit fish they try to peck algae off the case yeah. the mp40 cage and so they really like they swim up and they're like eh, really struggling against the, the current but they do get it <laughs> so i i know i know what that what that feels like because i there's actually two things i've done once i was i was in a swimming pool you know one of those small swimming pools with like jets on it so you yeah. it's like i would say like five feet long but you swim in it and the other thing i was once attached to a bungee cable where you run forward so i imagine that's what the fish feel like when they're trying to get the algae in front of it yeah 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 so um, a bit of a random story for you. i'm not sure why that came up but I just thought i'd throw I, it in there i've also got on my so on my water box i've got four uh it's only a two foot cube and it's only 16 inches tall so it's not even a two foot cube yeah. but i've got four ai nero fives <laughs> yeah <That's laughs> and i'm and that's LPS, but they're they're running quite low. They're below fifty percent. Partly with it, so partly that I couldn't get the flow right in that tank. It just it was when all when both the powers were, were at one end, the flow just it was rubbish, yeah. uh, and the corals were always blowing one way, which I didn't like. They didn't look very natural. Um, but uh, what was the other thing? I was oh yeah, but uh, Nero pumps because this is my home office and I like it to be quiet. I, I have um, I have them below fifty percent because if they're fifty percent yeah. or above, they're quite noisy. What are you yeah. looking at? I just saw someone's got four MP40s on a two foot tank. MP10s. Oh, sorry, MP10s. I was going to say for MP40s. Wow. <laughs> yeah, MP10s are. So I, I had MP10s 
um, on my first ever tank. This is actually one thing I was thinking about today uh, on in terms of flow. When I was first set up my tank, and I, I want to do a video, um, it'll be a while though, but I, when I first set up my tank, I, I spent two years researching, which was way too much, and I should have just got stuck in. Uh, but uh, in that two years researching, the one thing I took was flow is important. Right, massively important. I was like, right, in that case, it's worth spending some money then. So I'll get the best power heads. And I bought um, an MP. I only had one at first, but I ended up buying two MP10s. Yeah. And it's like, actually, an MP10, MP40s, MP10s aren't so good, I, I find, but MP40s are really, really good. And I like them. I choose them for my tank because I think they're they're the best choice for me. Yeah. But actually, you get a Jekod that's um, a quarter of the price um, and is... Uh, 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 and we'll kick out the same amount of flow. It's exactly the same for the corals. <laughs> like it, I, it's, I it's would... the corals, I don't think appreciate the um, the powers. The things that like the the MP40s. Me having a wet side, no cables in the tank, battery, yeah. all that. That's is worth it for me. But the corals, yeah. Yeah, I don't think. I've um I've always wondered why there's no like Chinese copy yeah. of the MP4. There's Chinese copies of everything, yeah. but the MP40s for some reason, and I don't know the... why that is. There's two things on that. One, there must be a pattern, and maybe uh, maybe Ecotech enforce it when they don't enforce other things. I don't know. But I also wonder, I always used to think that like Jekod copy everyone else because they're really blatant. But when you when you see like the Jekod and the AI Nero, there are there are two Jekod SLW series looks like the AI Nero. Yeah. But AI Nero's, I don't know if the Nero's are made in China to be fair, but the, the AI return pump is. And I started to think, well, hang on. Is it the Chinese copying the uh, other companies, <laughs> yeah. or is it actually the other way around? I don't know. They're, they're, some of the some of the pump companies in China are massive, but I've got, I've got no idea. But yeah, I've I've wondered that as well. There must be because how long has the MP forties been out? Ten years now, probably more. Probably, maybe, probably. maybe even longer than that. Yeah. Um. So I I don't know how long patents last. To be fair, or even if patents is the right word, but. <laughs> I don't know. I just, as I said, there's lots of things where you go, that's close enough to similar, that looks similar enough to another product um, yeah. that you think there's obviously a copy, whereas it just doesn't happen with those. I would wonder if they're too difficult to make or something. Yeah. Now, I obviously, you you know this already. So, so I start my week in reefing. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. yeah. So well, my, my, <laughs> I've had a very, very incredibly expensive week in reefing. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So I had um, the reason that I started wondering about the MP40s was because I had two MP40s um, fall into one of the tanks. The dry um, sides fell in. Yeah. The controllers fell in. Oh, um, the controller. Yeah, it was actually the controller that fell oh, in, not me. Oh, it fell off the wall forward. They'd been there for years and years and years, and and basically, like they've probably been there for four years. And what's essentially has happened is the Velcro on on them no longer sticks, and it has come forward, and they fall in the oh. tank. Um, and then one of them was heavy enough to bring the other one down in with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it hasn't caused any trouble to the tank or anything like that. Everything's fine. Um, I The problem, obviously, is that they don't like water and no. it immediately destroyed <laughs> both of them. So there was nothing I could do. So I've had to, I've had, I bought two new ones and then I also bought a third new one because. Uh, I had one a long time ago, which got salt in it, uh, got salt water in, in the dry side, mm. uh, which was still running fine, but it, it made a lot of noise. And I'm like, if anything's going to catch fire, it's definitely going to be that. Because <laughs> I'm like, why is it making such a noise? But yeah. I only use it very temporarily just to mix the salt. So it was like 20 minutes or half an hour at a time. Yeah. Um, so three new MP40s has been expensive. Um you will be very happy to what oh, you, you need to... actually just what winding back what you need is so you can get those brackets for the the control but the mp4 uh, yes can't you? that's what going forward They're... yes yeah, so you need what you need is a reef dock 3d printed uh, uh mp40 control box mount from etsy only only well from reef the only okay. problem is i don't make them <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but and actually so that you can get 3d printed uh, mp40 bra controller brackets yeah but they're they're only a they're only a small they're only about 20 percent cheaper than the official ecotech one and the ecotech one is metal and is a bit nicer because you, you get <clears throat> ecotech give them with with the the vectors but they don't give them with the mp40s yeah yeah 
um, which is weird because it's basically the same product. If you, like, there must be a big profit. <laughs> I've always thought there must be a massive profit margin on the MP40 because it's been because normally when a new product comes out with any any walk of life, whether it's uh, cameras, televisions, yeah. reef, whatever, at first it's really expensive because they've got to recoup all their R and D, and then yeah. it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper over time. Whereas MP40s are going up, so I I feel like they're probably make a lot of money on that proportionately but they, what they do is they that's their cash cow that they use to reinvest in the, the company so they they re because just because like with every if you set up a company you don't make the exact same amount of profit on everything some things you make yeah. more on some things you make less so i reckon that's what they do with that possibly <laughs> but they probably they might be using the like, like, I don't I don't want to speculate because I I've genuinely no have idea, no idea. <laughs> that's just, I'm just these, these are never, things I think about. <laughs> never any facts on this show, is there? There are no facts on this show at all. No. Um, so that was uh, that was the first expense of the week. Someone said, um, "Why didn't you just buy uh, a new controller?" They don't cut. So I believe they come as a dry side and a wet side, and the dry side doesn't include the controller. So because <laughs> I actually ordered the dry side and I had to send it back because it what it didn't. It, it wasn't what I needed. Yeah. Um, the uh, the next big expense, which you will be incredibly happy with, Alex, is that I got a new iPhone because obviously hey. all of my videos were filmed on my iPhone and they have always been the entire time I've been doing it. Um, but my phone's quite dated now. Uh, so the quality, I started to notice the quality of the, of the footage filmed wasn't as good as other people's, whereas mm. you, you can get it pretty good with, with a phone and it makes it easy to do the videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. so that's, that's good. The problem is obviously I have to get a one terabyte one, so they are incredibly expensive. <laughs> because I also, I think the reason they're so expensive is, is actually because they don't make very many of them. They were out of stock everywhere. Uh, interesting. That's what I was told anyway. Um, and the other thing, the other part of my expensive week was I have also bought a new iPad because... Um, new iPad went. <laughs> yes. So for those of you who didn't see the post that I put out, every single video I ever made was made on one iPad, which was is now 10 years old. So my <laughs> entire channel was built on iPad, which was 10 years old. You're probably starting to realize that I don't like change. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it no longer works. So I had to say goodbye to my 10-year-old iPad. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might get it framed. Yeah. That case looks like it's about a 1,000 years old. Yeah, it's, it's, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was used a lot originally. Yeah. Um, but How come you need a one terabyte iPhone? I've only got three terabytes on my, like, my PC. Well, I have 50,000 like, videos on my phone. <laughs> Right, right. That's you just throw actually true. Yeah. Actually, I think it might be more than that. One second, I can tell yeah, you. Bloody yeah. Um, it is it is an unusually large amount because I looked the other day. Uh, I know, yeah. So fifty one thousand four hundred ninety seven. So Festival. I have done a I have done a lot of um, uh, yeah, I've done a, a lot of filming over the years, and I just it's all been stored on there. What I should really do, and I've not got to this stage yet, I should buy an iMac. That's what I should do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then store all the videos on there in folders under the fish names. So if I want a picture of a copper band, I can use that. I can do that. But I'm not at that level where I'm willing to learn how an iMac works. <laughs> that's what I that's what I do. I have everything. So I've got like a library footage folder. So if I'm if I make a video about yellow long nose butterfly, I've got five videos of them and all that sort of stuff. It's yes. really useful, but uh, yeah, see, whereas what I do is I look through my phone, I know roughly where everything is in all those 50,000 pictures yeah. and then send them over one at a time um, for when I want them. But I, I don't want a PC, Les, because the reason I want a PC is because my iPhone automatically sends everything to my other devices. So that's why it works. So that's the problem, because I switched to, I've never had an iPhone until six months ago or two months ago. Yeah. Always had Android and I switched to iPhone and transferring stuff from your phone to your PC because I've yeah. got a PC, or vice a versa. Oh, it's such a hassle. Before, it was like, plug it in straight away, easy. Uh, so now that they're forcing me to get an iMac. But my, my I've had my computer for about two years, so it's got loads of life in it, and it was quite, a, well, semi-expensive. It wasn't mega-expensive, but I, I can't justify the upgrade. So now you understand why, because you, I think previously you probably thought, why doesn't he have a computer and do the editing on that like other people? Well, you now know. Like it's just it's purely comes down to the videos are very easy to transfer between one device to the other. That's it. You and should like, still get an iMac though. You can get a little Apple Studio that would be really good. They're not. Like I, I actually I did test out the iMac the other day. 
I just I've never used it at iMac or a Mac or anything. Um, and I, so and it's not the same as using a PC. So like the no. buttons, the clicking is different. Everything. Yeah. I, I tried using the shop, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, I'm not prepared to learn how to use this. <laughs> you've, you've seen what I am like with the camera, yeah. where I learn something, and then a week later I ask you what to do with it again. <laughs> um jay's looking at your ipad saying it feels like he's watching the antiques radio <laughs> well it, i actually googled how long ipads are meant to last they're only meant to last five years it doesn't even have the internet on it anymore like it really? like i cannot open web pages on it because it's no longer like supported or whatever yeah don't they update them and basically make the uh, make older I, I, apple stuff rubbish after it, a few I, years? I, basically i couldn't do anything on it other than make videos i couldn't open facebook on it or anything <laughs> Because it literally just goes to your Facebook is now too out of date to use, and there is no. I mean, you like, got your you got your money's worth out of it, though, didn't you? Well, that, <laughs> Ten years, what... and it probably cost you two hundred quid by then. It, yeah, <laughs> it, it probably did cost about that. Like, and I, I did think this. I thought, imagine how much money that has made from making the videos, and that's why I thought to myself, stop being tight, and let's get myself a nice iPad, nice iPhone, so I can, you know. But what that does tell you is the reason I found out my iPad wasn't working anymore was because I was actually making a video. So it's been a while oh, since yeah. I made a video. Yes, yeah. So I, I have filmed a video, but I can't actually edit it because the iPad doesn't work. So okay. there is a video yeah. coming at some point. So after six months in um, uh, into your new iPad, oh, no, wait, hang on, I'm just going to pause for a second. Yeah. David Brooksmith, do you know who that is? <laughs> Give me uh, three guesses. I, um, your husband? <laughs> No, that's my, <laughs> that's my dad. Hi, dad. Oh, oh I probably shouldn't have said that then. <laughs> he was, he's in Portugal at the moment. Uh, okay. Best Reef Tank is uh, by the escalator in the Burj Al Arab, Dubai, three stories tall. Uh, best Reef Tank is in my house, dad. So mm. nice try. Um, well, from what I've heard, your dad does an excellent job at looking after it when you're away. does, yeah. You're famous, dad. We talk about you looking after my couple. All the time. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, there's one thing. So Chris Allen says... You use iPad and iPhone with Microsoft OneDrive. And this guy says uh, you can easily transfer from iCloud to either PC or Mac. I'll there you go. Both of us don't know that. So we're learning something. I just, I, I, It's just difficult when you start using Apple for the first time ever, when you're yeah. you know, 20 years into using Android. It's like, ah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, week in reefing. I interrupted. Uh, so that... Well, that, that's that's the main expensives, and with regards to the uh, yeah. the water box, there is a little smattering of diatoms. It's been there for weeks now. It was it was there before. It's yeah, it's yeah. not getting it's not getting any worse. Oh, that it, didn't work, guys. No, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Those people like, on Instagram are like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you it wouldn't work. Yeah, it was it a did. very very small, like just very light dusting only on the sand. What I find most interesting is the fish never used to eat off the rocks ever. They never touched anything. They like everything was coated in diatoms. Right. They never ate off the MP40 or the back wall. They are now all eating off the rocks and the back wall and the MP40. The algae and stuff, there. which means it must be algae growing rather Brilliant. than diatoms, which is great. That's what I wanted. Have you got loads of cleanup crew in? No, I have. I, I don't have a huge amount. I've only got a few snails in there because cleanup crew eat diatoms, right? Yeah, but would they eat off the sand? Uh, conches. I've, I've got I've got a conch in there. And I've got Nasara snails as well. Yeah, okay. um, and I've got uh, probably like 15 turbo snails, but the turbo snails breed in there, so that like, I've got loads of little tiny baby ones, and I just think their population will reach a maximum yeah, capacity. Yeah. So I'm just letting them do what they want. I have that with dove snails. Do you have dove snails? No, thing? I had dove snails a long, long time ago, and you, and you get quite a few of them. And then I shut that tank down, and then I never ever saw them ever again. Never seen them on a piece of coral come in. Never seen them in a shop. Never seen never. I, and I just think until you get corals from me, mate. <laughs> it was. It must have just been like one lucky because I I didn't think they were bad. I just they're just part of the cleanup crew as far as they're I was. Good, aren't they? I think people don't like them because they this they're similar to other things where they get out of control. Yeah, that's the only issue. So so when I I, I saw the first one, I don't know a year or so ago. And I was like, oh, is that a baby conch? Conch, mm -hmm. conch. Because it looks like I was, it had the little snout. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. Posted it on Ultimate Reef. And they're like, it's dove snail, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and now I've got millions of them. And they, but they're good. They're, they're, I put them in my reef castle when I set that up. 
because the free cleanup crew and they're small, yeah. so they must have. You always talk about different size mouths and stuff. So yeah, but they every time I pick up a, a frag, they like dark places. So every time I pick up a frag plug, they're yeah. hiding under the uh, <laughs> on the stem and stuff. When you put out an ultra reef, were they like, um, "You're a YouTuber. You should you should know better." <laughs> no, no, no. It was just a genuine answer, but. Um, but yeah, uh, but it's funny though because when you get um, that's like I've eight years in, whatever nine years in, however long it's been, and I don't know what Duff Snail is. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens all the now, time. But, yeah, <clears throat> there were other things I had in previous tanks as well. I had these little tiny, tiny white starfish with where, where there were hundreds of them or thousands and thousands of these little tiny starfish. I've had thousands of these of these green and brown banded starfish again, small, um, and like once you move tanks, you just never see them again. And I just wonder, I'm like, was that like a one-off that I just had this weird thing that no one else ever has? Hmm. Because think about all the corals that come into the farm. Why have I not seen these things again? Yeah. Not Asterinas. Oh, no, I've seen plenty of those. Yeah, I know. Don't yeah. Know. yeah. Actually, um, the one thing I noticed on, on the Facebook group, the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook group, yeah. the most frequently asked question is, what's this? It's just coming on a coral. Yeah. And it's a stomatella snail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are good. It looks like a flat slug with a fingernail on it. It's a stomach yeah. snail. But it's funny because it's um you don't you don't really see them very often. I don't know if it's because you don't get live rock anymore. I get quite a lot of those to come in on, on the corals. Yeah, because yeah. every time they come in, they usually when you put the corals in the dip, they're annoyed. And so you, you start to see them moving. And I take them out and put them in one of the tanks. Yeah. So okay. I, I save this I it's funny, even though they're like these tiny, like insignificant life things, I still go through and save any small little starfish, any little snails and, and put them in there. Whenever I take, so if I've got a refugium on my water box, um, and whenever I pull out the the Cheeto to Kato to um, harvest it, yeah, there's always loads of little copepods and stuff. I try to save and rescue as many. Of them as yeah, I, I know. And it's like there's there's a million in there. What are you doing? But I just can't help myself. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's one of those things. You save them. You put them in the you put them in the the main display tank, and then the fish come and eat them. <laughs> Because yeah. I've done that before that's as well. Exactly, that's exactly what I do. I, I try to get the attention of my orc fish because I like. Oh, so you actually so you save them to feed them. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I put them in. I put them into for my my little puff, the little um, yeah. uh, mimic filefish because I mm. like feeding him. Uh, but sometimes I put them in to to try to rescue them. Someone just said it a minute ago. By the way, um, how can I help? How can I deal with velvet? And I'm afraid there's no solution. They'll probably be dead in 24 hours. Yes um metroplex is is what um, metroplex. Uh, is it Me is metroplex for velvet i think it is i thought well, there was might, basically might nothing you could do about i've never had um, um velvet fortunately i can't, well, one of the <laughs> things when you google metroplex is a transformer <laughs> is it it's yeah. either it's either no i think copper is for um ick and velvet and metroplex is for brook i believe that's oh, okay but one of them covers covers it but generally with with velvet they're they're gone very quickly yeah it's, sometimes yeah. you don't even know the fish don't even look ill and they and, and they're gone so yeah on the metroplex page on the website on the CKM website doesn't say anything about velvet it says ick cryptocorian carrying whatever but oh no the velvet yeah it does say velvet okay oh, there you go. but um you're not going to want to put that in your reef tank i'm guessing or can you put it in food and feed it that way you can put it in food uh, you can use Seachem's Focus and and that will bind it to food and then feed it to the fish. Oh, cool. Seachem Focus. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's like a little powder that you like if you want to feed fish medication. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem with that is you have to get it from America because no one sells Metroplex here. I don't know why. I don't think they're allowed to. I bet it's, yeah, it'll be a... Because basically, like in America, I feel like the the drug uh, drug is drugs are much less heavily regulated than they are over here. Yeah. Because there's all sorts of stuff that's over the counter over there that you can't even get here. So. Yeah. So if you want some like you know back alley Metroplex, you let me know. <laughs> so. Yeah. I I literally I just order it from America and they send it over and it's never a problem. Because you, um, you have to get uh, what's the stuff that does cyanobacteria chemically. Yeah, you have chemically. To get that from America, don't you? I think yeah. it cost me like. It cost me about thirty quid. Half of that was postage last time. Yeah, there's there um was Prazi Pro as well is another one where yeah um <clears throat> if you look at how much it costs over there it's like five dollars and here it's like twenty two pounds <laughs> and you're yeah. like and it's for like this little tiny vial of like thirty mils I think is what's in it of twenty nine mils and I'm just like but even then with like the the chemi clean I when I bought that it's a small tub or whatever it is of powder. Yeah. But I used a tiny amount of it, and then that was it. <laughs> I didn't need the rest, so I gave it away. It's like because you, oh, no, you feel we, hard we, done by. But with the Prazi Pro, you have to use 
like a relative like oh, for, let's suppose say for a 900 lead tank i have to use two of them right so you could and it's, it's reef safe as well uh, people have said that sometimes the sps don't like it and um and anemones but generally it's considered reef safe the instructions on it are a bit are interesting because it just says after three days it will no longer be in your tank and i'm like where's it gone <laughs> like where does it go yeah um you can use copper to, to and they they say you can use water change as well to take out any remaining traces but like how does it just disappear does it leave via gas or something i don't know other than that, as far as I'm concerned, it's still in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe well, if it's dead and it's in there, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, it just decomposes and becomes bacteria food. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even well, know what it is, actually, if I'm honest. Fair but enough. yeah, Flugsov is the same one. Yes, that is that is the same as... Um, but I, I, I've, I, I've never used Flugsov, but I have used Prazi Pro. I've never used either, I don't think. I did get... When I was quarantining, uh, when I first got into the hobby, I, I was yeah. looking for... Prazi Quantel, there are a few things I was looking for. Um, and I ended up doing fresh freshwater dips are terrifying. I hated them. No, I'm used to them now. Uh, you, the first you time you do a three thousand pound angel fish yeah. <laughs> and see how you feel then. I can't I think I did it with a um a mandarin or something, and it just like the fish, it looks like it's dead, and it's like, oh my god. And you've got to hold your nerve and keep it in there for a minute or however long it is. I um I don't allow it to to get to the stage where it's lying down. I I will keep it moving all oh, the time. Really? Stress so, it out. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather just I'd rather it was swimming so I knew that ox it's getting oxygen and things yeah, yeah. like that. So I um, did it once and it wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't have I, a stomach. I, but it's, I bet I bet if you do it a couple of times, it's like eh, it's fine. Nothing yeah. anymore for me. I like I literally I just match the temperature of RO water. That's it. Um, some people will match the pH and they'll put pH stuff in, but I I don't know how. I don't know how effective that is or if it, how, how much of a big difference it makes. All I know is I use RO water. I match the temperature. I've never killed a fish. And I and the fish I have put in there are not like, they're not cheap fish, if you see what I mean. Mm. What I do like, I like it when you put the fish in and then you see the little white like flukes come off and you're like, yes, you know, this was, this did something, Victory, if you see what yeah. I mean. So it's, this made a difference. Yeah. Um, although it doesn't get the eggs, it's the same as most things. Right, okay um we've di uh, digressed what's uh what else happened you was, was that your last expense in your week of evening? uh yes mm -hmm. i would i would say yeah i think that's probably it because i uh yeah that is it that i was saying that's that's my week in reefing excellent <laughs> uh so i've got a few things so oh actually you mentioned earlier the um uh, drop in a uh, thing in water so i when i set up the reef casa they sent me two return dropping pumps it. Dropping the oh, everywhere. dropping! Oh, yeah, drop. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they sent me they sent me two return pumps because it was a, it's a Canadian um, company, and so they they sent me one that was with a Canadian uh, power or whatever, and then they sent me one with a UK um, adapter or whatever. And I accidentally plugged in the the Canadian one to start yeah. with, and it started smoking. <laughs> like oh, I could yeah. see smoke coming out of the yeah, water. Yeah. Oh God! So I unplugged that quick. <laughs> um and so because i think it's like 120 40 volt 120 volt 240 volt i don't really understand it's, like, yeah something like as that. you can tell but yeah it went like instantly it was like oh my god i thought i was gonna die <laughs> um but yeah so i've had I've, my tank breakdown has continued this week when um, you did your review did you put the fact that they put two <laughs> um two plugs in the box in your no, review because that was just for me so that oh, was it? He, oh. he sent me the pack everything that it came yeah. with and he also sent me one that I could actually use. Whereas I just I know how much you love extra plugs. You see, so oh I see, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, so I'll let you continue. Yeah, yeah. Before I start my rant about the iPhone not having a charger, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my tank breakdown has continued this week. Yeah, um, and it's accelerated at quite a pace. I've got rid of a, a few more corals, and what I've what I've, what I've been doing is because all my corals are encrusted onto the rock. Mm -hmm. So to get them off, I take the rock out, I get a crowbar and a hammer, <laughs> and then smack the rock until uh, they come off. Do you and do actually, that while people are there? Like, yeah, I do. As you're like smashing off their new delicate coral. Yeah. <laughs> a, a guy came last weekend and took a load of coral, a load of colonies as well, yeah, acros. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, you just put, he, he, I was like, just hold that. <laughs> and then I started smashing away. I was like, I promise you these, I promise this hammer and crowbar is not going to go touch your acros. Yeah. But wait, weirdly, so I, I did that today with a, um, uh, a, a forest fire Monty and I was trying to chip away at the rock 
and the forest fire just shattered it just it went into yeah. like three or four pieces which is a shame and then i smashed one of my aquaries which was really annoying um uh but the but when i did this the other day with real reef rock the real reef rock came away really easily and i found that if you tap the the real reef rock with a hammer and chisel or a crowbar um the real reef rock crumbles and the acro the coral stays perfect I don't know if it's because it's stronger than the the rock or whatever because it's alive. I don't know, but it, it like the the acro came clean off, and yeah. it left behind the. I, I was expecting to smash it in half, but it worked really well. <laughs> it must be. It, it must literally just be where that must be the weak point. So you're yeah. right. You're correct. It must give it extra structure. So the the weakest point is where it breaks. Yeah, but it worked a charm. So if you wanna if you wanna, uh, they're my special aquapora tools because you know how delicate aquapora are. Yeah, well, I use a hammer and uh, <laughs> and crowbar. That's what they use in the ocean as well when they collect them. So <laughs> really, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, you literally just go go out there and just start smashing bits off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. It was quite easy. But the, uh, the trouble is, I've got I've listed most of my cards. I'm selling them on Ultimate Reef. So if you want to buy anything, go on Ultimate Reef and have a look. But I've listed um listed most of them. But there's I've got one big island that I still need to pull out and I need to break everything off. And, but it's massive and I can't face the prospect of doing it. I'm going to try to do it next week at some point. But just the, the idea, because all the cars, I mean, this was the island that I bought is RR Aquascape. So it's got little frag plug holes. Yeah. So it's really easy because you can put the coral in and then just whip it out. But they've all grown over it completely. Yeah. Or half of them have anyway. So it's like, oh, so I've got to pull it out and crowbar it. Are they, um, are they like branches though? <laughs> yeah. Can't you just like break each branch? Yeah, that's that's what because, I'm going to have to do. Yeah. But like, I, but if it the, with some of them, I've been able to reach in and pull the uh, the frag plug out of the hole, easy. Yeah. But with most of them, I've got to take the whole thing. And this rock is heavy, and it's got corals on it that weigh a few kilos as well. And it's just going to ah, oh, just. And when you when you pull it, when you take it out of the water, you can't see. It's more difficult to see where the coral ends and the rock begins because it all just looks dark. Um, so it's just, oh, it's just. You're not going to take a crowbar to my um, jack lantern, are you? I did that today, actually, and it smashed. Did you? It smashed into three pieces, I think. Oh, oh the <laughs> price obviously must fall there. Because it's, it's smashed into three pieces, because I what? would never, I would never break it up. You're so... getting, you're getting three pieces now, so the price For goes the up. Price of one, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, but no, I did that. That was on. I had in mind that that was going to break perfectly. But it broke into three bits. But, yeah. um, but that's jack o' lanterns a funny one because I I used to think I was scared of fragging it, but actually it's just, you just snap it. It's just it's like it's like yeah. Monty. Really I remember easy. you said on one of our very very first live streams. I think I'm pretty sure it was you who said I was. I'm like, why? Literally just smash it up. It'll be completely fine. Someone posted on the Facebook group Some, advising yeah. about it and saying don't yeah. do it or something. And yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, someone said don't do it, and I was like. I do it all the time, <laughs> but I'd avoided doing it because it looked fleshy to me. It looks, it's got like the the skirt is like it like flaps yeah. in the um in the current. So I thought it's all going to be flesh, but it's just you just snap it like a monty. It's easy. Um, but yeah, there we go. Oh, I was going to ask you from last week. I, I started, <laughs> I started asking you this question, and then I forgot halfway through why I was asking you. Okay, but I've remembered. <laughs> so Let's last try and week, remain focused. I know. Yeah, God, I can't. Oh, what was I going to say? No, I'm joking. Um, so last week you had a power cut, right? Or your power tripped, sorry. Yes, yeah. Uh, so what time did that happen? Midnight? One o'clock in the morning. 1 a.m. What time yeah. did you wake up and fix it, turn the power back on? Seven, I think. Oh. Were your MP40 still going on the battery backup? Uh, I th Well, the fish are all alive, so I assume so. I can't, I, I'll be honest with you, I can't I remember. remember. the water moving. Oh. I, I, I can't remember. The... the um. They do, like, I don't know. I was too busy going, why is this water so hot? <laughs> you oh. see what I mean? Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, why does it smell funny? I wasn't like, let's go have a look at, see if the MP40s no. are running. You see what I mean? But I, I think they probably would have been, but I was just interested to see in a real world situation when you've had them for years, those oh, batteries you've had work. them for, yeah, and yeah, or yeah. how long they last, because they're going to work. But I, how long they I last. had it probably last year where there was a planned power cut. Yes, and so I, I actually, they, they kicked in then. I, I knew it was going to happen, and it, and it worked, and everything was fine. The how only thing that do you remember, how long was the power cut? Five yeah. hours, I think. I okay. think something like that. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I, um, that does become a problem when the power goes out, which is interesting because it didn't, it didn't seem to affect uh, the digis this time, and I think it's because the lights were off, obviously because it was in the middle of the night. Um, the return pump obviously doesn't work 
and all the digis are exposed to air like yeah, because yeah. they're so close to the surface of the water as the water level drops the top inch doesn't um is exposed but i had it before when that happened that was when the 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 power cut was uh where the top died whereas this time they didn't and i don't know why that is i don't know why but time i don't because they can stay i don't know about monty's but there are plenty of cars plenty of aquas that live in really shallow water and get exposed to air every day yeah yeah i was surprised mm -hmm. if people um sometimes ask me like oh how long can a car be out of water i'm like oh a lot longer than longer you think than you it can, can be out of water <laughs> well i've got one one um i've got a, like a dinner plate size slab of um uh sunset monty and i'm going to try to sell it but if i can't i'm going to see if i can take it to my local fish shop who probably won't want it because it's yeah. just a pain in the ass but anyway i was thinking how would i get it there because i haven't got any container big enough and i yeah. thought well what i'd probably do is just take it out put it on a towel or something and just drive it there in the dry if it's only half an hour it'd be fine i know someone who did that but, with, no, with really. uh, a different type of monty yeah and it was yeah. like one of those, like uh, it, it was a huge, huge Monty. Yeah. Um, and they just put it in the back of the car and just drove. Yeah. I kind of can't imagine the car smelt very nice afterwards. No. And I, I, the shop would think I was weird if I did that. I think I tried to avoid that anyway. But uh, but yeah, longer than you. Was, longer it was in water in the car. I just couldn't lift it out. <laughs> yeah, so I just yeah. put the Monty in. I've had dreams, you know, before when uh, when I've had a tank that's run dry and there've been corals alive just in thin air. So. <laughs> I don't want that tells I think you, I think you've you've probably got gone too far in the hobby if you're starting to dream about it. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, a couple more things. I have long suspected, Ryan, that I'm a genius, as I'm sure you have as well. Oh, I've definitely long suspected the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. Long suspected, and that has been confirmed this week. I actually am a genius. Just quickly, we have spoken about the Dunning Kruger effect before, haven't we? Where the people that think they're the smartest are often the dumbest. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, so that, it's saying? not relevant. It's not relevant to this story. I'm just letting you know. I don't understand the point, but okay. So, yeah. all right. Well, what I'm going to show you is so let me just get this up here. What is? What do you think? What piece of equipment is in this um, uh, jug? Would you? It's guess? actually hard to see from here, but it looks like it's a, a small return pump. Uh, it it's, it, well, uh, oh, I no, it's a power head. To the uninitiated, it might look like a power head. Yeah, but look at that. Ooh. Oh, it's so a power head running a on a pack. on a battery pack just a, a, a phone charging battery pack you have to remember and... on my screen it's like this big <laughs> you're <laughs> like what is this tiny tiny object in my hand know, yeah it's not that big <laughs> in, in real life but uh, the point is so i found this um this has been running by the way i, I started the stopwatch this is only a ten thousand milliamp this is the the thing that you use to charge your phone it's an anger ten thousand milliamp hour charger it's been running for five hours so far and it wasn't fully charged. Um, and it's just this little power head has just been running along there, sat in this um, in the jug, and it's still going. And the reason that's significant is because uh, if you want a battery back up on your, um, your tank, there are options. There's a tonsy one, um, but it's, it's a bit awkward. You need to research and know what you're doing to set it up. I'm sure it's easy once you've done it, but it looked like a pain in the ass, and that puts most people off. The Ecotech one, simple. You plug it in, job done. And that's why everyone buys it yeah, because yeah. it's so easy. This, if but you don't if you've got a small tank, you don't want an MP40 on it or an MP10. This is a tiny little power head. And if this works, if my plan works, this is perfect because I can have a battery backup on uh, on any on my on all of my tank, like on the Cade, I could have it on there. The problem with it is at the moment, so this doesn't function the battery pack does not function as a an uninterruptible power supply so when i plugged this into the the mains earlier the power head stopped working okay and then when i unplugged it it started working again so you, it, it can't it won't kick in automatically but you can get uh, this is a ups an uninterruptible power supply for a, a wireless router and it has little usb outlets and that's the the key the genius of this power head let me just get rid of that is it's you plug it in this the plug socket is a, a usb uh, cable yeah, so yeah i know that i mean in in theory it, i can plug it into the the usb socket on this uh router uh ups and this is twenty seven thousand milliamp hours so it'll last for 18 hours a long time and in theory i can plug it into that and then I've got a battery backup without having to have Ecotech. If um, 
if the tank was out for 18 hours, I'd be worried about more than just flow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Serious problems. Yes, but the point is, because so, every time the power goes out in my house, and it's normally if something trips it, I always think, yeah. like, it's going to be back on in 10 minutes. It's fine. But what if it's not? Or what if I was away? Mm -hmm. And then I lose everything. Yeah. So, and I don't like that I don't have options. I've got one on my main tank because I've got the Ecotate one. But I love the idea of this being on all my, all my other tanks. So I'm going to try it. I've ordered that um, UPS, by the way. I've ordered it today. It'll be here tomorrow. I don't know if it'll work because this, the anchor one, doesn't work. But you if it works, you love buying stuff. I Anything do. random, you love buying. <laughs> I know. But this is this is about. I do need battery backup. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the other option is is this, and I tried this today. The power went out. The power tripped, of course. And this is my anchor five two one. It is so. It's a big old battery, and I plugged in a um a little twelve volt. Uh, return pump and just put it in my water box just to create some flow and that yeah. worked and that would have run for 20 hours but i, but I my none of my uh, power heads are actually 12 volts they're all 24 volts so that can't work as a automatic solution anyone who is listening that doesn't have a battery backup on their tank it's like as i said this many times before it's like having it when you have one buying one is like buying insurance you don't want to pay for insurance because the chances are you won't need it. But when you do need it, you're very grateful you have it. Um, and that was it was the cause of one of my biggest crashes. I lost, I think, probably two between two and two and a half thousand pounds of fish mm. in four hours before because it was a very heavily stocked tank and there was just no oxygen and it was the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, so every tank has had a battery backup on since. Um, over Christmas, my parents were in Australia and they uh they had a power cut for a week because of a hurricane and now that's not that's not normal there right. but what i'm trying to say is at some point something might come up there was a power cut here for a week over christmas one christmas you said yeah <laughs> yeah so if you if you think you don't need one trust yeah. me at some point you will <laughs> and once and once uh once you get to that point it's too late yeah well, that, and that's it. I, I don't want to get to that point. So that's why I want these. And the, so this, the, the power head is, it's a TMC a reef flow nano. And the, the, there's only, the smallest one is the only one thousand liters power. That's the only one that has a USB socket Yeah, yeah. that you can also get. It's made by ZKSJ. You can get it for 50 quid online. So 50 quid for that, 80 quid for the power, for the PSU, uh, UPS, sorry, 130 pounds in total will get you uh, a battery backup a power head. And that doesn't use an extra uh, plug socket like the MP40 one does. So I might just have <clears throat> uh, come up with the best solution ever for nano tank. I say very uh, small tanks, maybe not me. <laughs> exactly. And I, I was thinking actually, potentially this could work on any tank. Obviously, that a pump that size isn't going to move much water. But if that yeah. was in your main tank, it would still yeah. disturb the surface of the water. So you just if you just add it in as a, 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 bat, a redundancy issue, it could yeah. work, I think, probably. I think no, I, I, it definitely, problem. definitely would work. You can have it right at the surface where it's literally going, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> pulling as much air as possible. Yeah. Um, it would just mean you'd have to have another power head in your tank, which I'm not sure that I it's would want. Tiny. Like. It's the size of a 50p coin, but but I know what what I mean. you, you could hide it by the wheel. But anyway, it's, it's not hide it behind. If for, for small tanks like the Cade, it's perfect because you'd, yeah. you'll never see it. Um, and if there's a power cut, I'm happy. And actually, what I'm going to put it on the reef casa because I need a power head, and that's tiny, so that's perfect. But there we go. So I might, I might actually not be a genius because the thing is, when whenever you discover something and you can't find out, and the, you see this all the time, right, on forums, Facebook, everywhere, Instagram, you see it where someone will say, uh, "I'm going to, I want to do." They'll, they'll tell you what they want to do, whether it's putting powdered calcrasa directly into the tank or whatever it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who would ever do that? <laughs> Exactly. But some niche idea that nobody else does. And it's like, there are two possibilities here. Number one, you're a genius and you've thought of something that no one ever has. Yeah. Or number two, you're about to kill loads, everything. <laughs> loads of people have thought of this before and it's a bad idea, which is why no one does it. <laughs> yeah. So there's every chance that this is the second category. Uh, but I'll report back. I don't think it'll be the second category. I think I it'll work, to be fair. I and think I'm, it'll work. I'm, I'm sure other people already do it. Um, this, this is yeah. not my invention. But um, because UPS normally, a, a proper UPS that you use for your computer is no good for a reef tank because it, it just they run out really quickly. But this, it, it's a very low draw. It's a five watt power head. So it'll, it'll run for hours. I mean, this has been running for five hours on a half charged um, little one. So 
It doesn't look like it's making much flow if it's in a little jug, though. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but it, it's, I had it in a 10 litre bucket earlier and it was, it was, it was making enough flow. Sorry. It's not uh, like is it's it turned down at the moment. No, there's only got one setting. It's either on or off. Oh. It does, it does pulse. It's yeah. funny. I watched the video, the official video for this earlier. Uh, I probably shouldn't criticize the manufacturer, but <laughs> they were, they were, they had it in a tank. It was a tank probably the size of the Cade. So yeah. relatively big for such a tiny power head. And they were trying to demonstrate the flow, but the video was sped up. And that was, was the only, yeah. And it, I don't know if this was deliberate, but it looked like they were trying to speed the, the, the video up to make it look like the water was moving more quickly. <laughs> um, well, we don't, we, you're right. Probably best not to criticize the manufacturer. <laughs> because they, so they, far, they, we've they, got through 45 minutes. And as far as I know, we haven't upset nice. anyone yet. But, but anyway, whatever. But the, the point is, so I think actually that video, it was on too big a tank. If it was on a small tank like the Reef Casser, it's perfect because yeah. you don't want the big powerhead. But anyway, 130 quid for that complete setup. The Nero 3 is 175 just for the pump. No, no battery backup. So that's not bad value potentially. Yeah. yeah. But I'll report back uh, and we will confirm if I'm a genius. Um, no, no, no. Yeah. Two other th questions for you. Firstly, uh, are you up for doing a, a live stream? Someone asked me today, and I've been thinking about doing this for a while, a live stream on your DIY dosing setup. You're you know, like putting to... me on the spot here. You're asking oh, me in yeah. front of all these people. This is how I do things, Ryan. You know this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I don't... When you say DIY dosing, do you... I'm assuming you just want to know what. Basically, uh... yeah. Like you, you, you mix up calc... Out calcium alkalinity and magnesium yeah yeah. i, I, I want to know what you buy where you buy it from just so it's so basically someone can watch the live stream and go away and make their own dosing elements no problem are you are you paying for the consultation for for this for <laughs> i'm just joking i, I pay yeah. you in advertising <laughs> i am um, i'm just joking anyway, because, but yeah I've, I've spoken about it loads of times so yeah i don't, I don't mind doing we'll it. do it properly okay and actually do you know what so i told you earlier it's you know funny most people i think only one person all the consultations i've ever done has asked that question <laughs> What are the DIYs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite only, an advanced question, isn't it? Is it? A, yeah, it is quite advanced, yeah. Uh, even I don't do my own dosing yeah. stuff. Well, Jamie now does because he caught, he asked me about it the other day and yeah. I sent him the recipe. So. It's, it's one, so I think I might do it at some point, but it's one of those things where I go back and forwards. I think, well, on the one hand, when you spend as much money as we do on our tanks, what's the point of saving 20 quid a month or whatever? when you, you can just get it all mixed up and it's easy. But that's also, 240 pounds a year. <laughs> but that's the thing. The other side of that is, well, why spend that much money when you yeah. can get it for literally a tenth the cost? It's like, so yeah. I, I go back and forwards on it, but um, but we'll do that because I just think it'd be useful for people to, to know. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind doing it. What was um, the second question? Second question was, so I'll be setting up a new tank soon, six foot similar to yours. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite as wide as yours, but it is wider than my current tank front to back, uh, which is narrowing it down. You might be able to work out what tank I'm going for from that. But anyway, uh, if you were set, oh, I've deleted my question. Wrong one. If you were setting up, uh, oh, well, no, the question is, what did you learn from set? Because every time I set up a tank, no matter how long I've been doing it, yeah. I learn new stuff. So what did you learn and what would you do differently from your water box? I don't know, with regards to doing things differently, I don't think I would. What I did learn is that, and I learned this from every single tank that I've ever set up, every tank is completely different. And I, and I expect you to have this experience as well. So you are a very successful SPS acro keeper. You might find the next tank you have, like the 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 stages of, of like the cycling and everything will not be anywhere near as smooth as you did it previously. <laughs> And the tank does what it wants. You might have diatoms or dinoflagellates or cyano or anything. Now, I've not dealt with those in previous systems, but in this one, I did. <laughs> so you're you're yeah. always learning. And every time you think you know it, like a lot about the hobby, it will come back and kick you in the butt. <laughs> so you might, as I said, it might be really smooth for you. I, I will be honest with you. And I've said this before. And I, I, try, I try and be open with people. Um, so during one of the consultations I had the other day, I said to the guy, so there are two issues with, with, when I do the consultations, I tried to work out, is it a knowledge thing that's missing or is it an effort thing that's missing? Yeah, and okay. I, I had a conversation with someone the other day and I said, look, I know what it's like to not want to put the effort in or to lose mm, that thing yeah. <laughs> that, and the reason I know that is because I put a lot of effort into the farm because I have to, because it's like, there's a lot of money there and but I don't have that same desire for the water box, which is why I, I 
understand how people feel. And usually when people come to me, they are at that stage when they go, look, I've, I'm fed up now. Um, so would I, I obviously I, I, I'm quarantining now, which is different to when I first set it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think I would do any, the rest of it differently, if I'm honest. I think I did it how I would, would do it going forward. I just wasn't prepared for the hassle <laughs> that would come come with a problem, if you see what I mean, because I hadn't mm-hmm. dealt with it before. Okay. So, I, as I said, I, I'm actually looking nothing. forward well, to seeing... Really useful, thanks. Oh, cheers. You do well, what, no, as I said, I, I kind of just... I li- literally, I like... I'm not that far. Remember, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still only like a month in. <laughs> yeah, I've only yeah. got fish in there. <laughs> so I'm not that far into it. Although I've had it for almost a year now, I'm not that much further forward. I've Has not it been a year? No, no. I got it in like, I think I set up in like, oh yeah, it's been a year, February. <laughs> Bloody hell, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, and it, look, it had its ups and downs, didn't it? It was going really, really well. And then the fish died and then it, then I lost the enjoyment from it and, um, but now I'm get back. I've actually got that enjoyment back now. So, and I'm looking to get uh, a new fish, uh, okay. which there's there's a couple of choices. Uh, I've noticed that there's a couple of like, like remember I like expensive fish these days because yeah. <laughs> I've had every other fish you can possibly imagine, um, and the farm's full of them. Um, there are two. A black tang is the most likely because I've seen a few knocking around at the moment. Okay. Um, and I would possibly be tempted by an Achilles, which is Ooh. a terrible idea. <laughs> Where would you quarantine it yourself? Yes, of course, absolutely. Bloody, like, no, but as in, I, I, like, I, I was wondering if you find somewhere to quarantine it for you because that's a small quarantine tank you've got. Yeah, Achilles. but I want a small one. I don't want a big one. I yeah, but how, how? I've never seen a proper small Achilles. It's seventy liters. The the tank. Yeah, so. yeah. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I am tempted by an Achilles. This is one of those things, because this is another thing during the consultations I do with people. People go, I want a powder blue tank. I really want a powder blue tank. And I go, that is not a good idea. Don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas sometimes I don't listen to myself. Yeah, I love how I'm talking. Everyone's everyone's distracted by the cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Fred Timmers. Um, Yeah, doctors make the worst patients. So Yeah, I... I'm usually pretty good at not buying things that I know are a terrible idea. And I think an Achilles is my only yeah. temp. The only thing I'm thinking is I'm just going, well, if I quarantine it this time, in theory, there's no, it like, there's no more risk really than other fish. Cause it, that, that's the main issue with Achilles is quarantine is, is disease. If there's no disease, then in theory, it should be fine. You've got to be pretty confident that you get quarantine perfect though. Yes, that and is. What, so with your with your um, tiger angel, yeah, didn't you take it out early because it was suffering? Now you've talked about this on the stream before. Yeah, no, I know, no, I know, I know. You're not giving away any information. I'm just going because I want to talk about it again. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. it, it 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 wasn't. Yeah, the the angel wasn't happy. It was no. So what do you do happy. if you've spent three hundred quid on an Achilles tang? It's the struggling. Do you think Achilles tang has cost three hundred pounds? Is it half a double that or? It's, yeah, it's more. Like, I think the last Achilles tank. I, look, I I saw a shop was like six hundred pounds. Yeah. Okay. Now obviously so there you go. Like, so, yeah. Um, well, you spent you spent six hundred quid on, on Achilles tang. Picture but, the scene. It, it's been in your in your copper for a week. It's struggling. You try you t- you do a full hundred percent water change. It still struggles. Do you just let it die or do you put it in your main tank? Uh, no. Th- so uh, what I would probably do is I would drain the whole tank and start again start the quarantine period yeah 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 so you let's say you do that and it's still struggling (laughs) no i would just keep quarantining it (laughs) i'd quarantine it with no copper and then i'd keep but that's actually less of what my concern is my actual main concern is when i because the only time i ended a quarantine early and it was at like day 17 or 18 or whatever so you'd all like quarantine is usually two weeks and then you do another two weeks. You can put them in an observation tank, but I yeah. don't do that. Um, I, I keep them in that for the whole time just to make sure because of the, the life cycle of the parasites. Um, if I got it wrong the first with the king eye and then didn't wipe it out in that first 14 day cycle, and then on the 18th day, put it in the tank, in theory, that means the tank's got, got it in. It's just not showing up. 
So then it doesn't matter if you quarantine the Achilles, you then put it in the tank and then it gets it. Do you, do you yeah, see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, to, to be, I don't know anything about quarantining fish, so you know. <laughs> yeah. So just... it's I it's a terrible idea for so many reasons. I was gonna say, so let's say for the sake of argument, you quarantine it and it's it, it it's cured, it's got no no parasites, nothing whatsoever. It's yeah. the perfect fish. And yeah. we'll assume that all of your fish in your tank are the same. And that you haven't brought white spot in on a snail or something unlucky like that. Yeah. So let's say, assume all of that. There's still more issues. <laughs> yeah. What about the aggression? <laughs> uh, they are aggressive. They will are prone to not eating. Um, they are stressed very easily. They need an incredibly high flow tank because they because of that's the mm. that's yeah, actually what like stresses it. them out. They need a really high flow to make them feel calm. So all of those things tell me it's an absolutely terrible idea. <laughs> Um, but whereas keeping a black, a, keeping a a black tank, tank of, yeah, a black tank in comparison is like like a ten on a out of ten on the idea scale, whereas an Achilles is like a one out of ten on the idea scale. <laughs> but yeah, but you still might do it. I I think it would be very very unlikely if I'm honest. I, 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 I should say, although I'm highlighting all the, the negatives, I'd love it because they're a stunning fish. Yeah. So. If if I saw the right one, it was about this big, which you never I, see. I've never seen even they're they're normally sort of four, five, six inches long. Yeah, I have. I've seen smaller ones than that, but okay. um, but I've never seen like you know where you get like some tangs, you get like baby yeah. baby form. Yeah. So if if it was the right size, um, then I would could I would I would consider it. But okay, I I was given an Achilles once. Um, it really? came from a it, yeah, it came from a tank breakdown. It was the one that burst and and it and it it didn't survive. So I know. It was just one of those that I've already had a negative experience, but I've never actually bought one myself. If you see what I mean, mm. or it'd be cool if you did. If you did do that, oh, don't tell me all the negatives and then go, oh yeah, but even though it's negative, it would be cool if you still got it. It would, because <laughs> it's I wouldn't want it, but I liked like it when you experiment. It was a bad idea to get a load of angel fish and put them in with LPS, but you were going to do that. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. I'm still, like, my plan is still the same. It's, it hasn't changed, and if if um. If the diatoms weren't there, the the tank would be it would have loads of like coral and stuff in it now, but like we we don't choose the path that we go on with our tanks. The tank chooses it for ourselves, I think, for itself, yeah. and, and, and we're be, just along for the ride. You've been in the hobby what fifteen years now, maybe longer. Seventeen years now. Seventeen years. You get bored of you don't want to buy another clownfish. You don't yeah. want to buy another goby or whatever. You're like, yeah, I want something spicy. That that's exactly what it is. And that that's why that tank has if you actually if you look at the water box, it has the, the king eye in it, which I've never had before, it has a majestic in it, which I've never had before, other than maybe like for a, a day, and then I put it in, it started eating coral, so I took it out. Um it's got a jewel tang, which is not one of the fish that I've had like before. Um it's got a yellow tang, and then it's got uh two assessors. So that if I want to reignite my love of that tank, what I need to do is put coral in it that I don't have. <laughs> I need yeah. to go and find coral in shops or wherever that makes me excited and then go, right, that's going in the water box because that will reignite that passion for me. Whereas what I tried to do before was be cheap and just take my own corals and put them in there. <laughs> that's the <laughs> it, thing. It's, yeah. It doesn't feel special. It just feels like an extension of what I'm already doing. That I tried that with my my main tank that I'm now shutting down. When I first set that up, I had just Stylo, Montes, some acros, but those sorts of staghorns, boring corals. Yeah, no offense. <laughs> but um, and I just didn't, I just didn't, I wasn't up for it. I was just like, oh, it's boring. So I found I needed in inverted commas acros. Yeah, get spicy, but, um, there was. So, uh, let's go on, sorry. That, that that's what I will probably. That's what I will need to do. I need to. I need to just be like everyone else and go and buy stuff, go round shops. Because yeah. that's what that's, I think that's like probably 50% of the fun of, of the hobby. You go somewhere, you have no idea what you're going to find. And then you go and, and, and then you, so you don't know what you're going to come home with that day, especially if you're buying coral. With fish, you usually can roughly yeah. know what you want. But with coral, you just go, wow, I've never seen like that one of that coloration or that's got some weird like growth format or whatever on it so it makes it exciting whereas i don't have that anymore because i don't ever go to shops mm. so yeah start well, we, a shop we, tour. we still need to do that shop tour that will i'll take a day off work or something and we'll do it 
Um, there's a question. John Wright says, are you keeping all your live rock for your new tank? Um, no, I'm not. I'm getting rid of all of my... Uh, I'm going to shut the tank down completely, sell all the corals, all the... Well, throw the, the rock away, basically. Um, I don't think there's any reason. Oh, I just can't store it anywhere. I've not got any pests on it. Like, um, there's no update. The update didn't ever come back, really. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get rid of all of that. I'll keep the fish. I've transferred some of my favorite aquos frags of them into my water box so they're in there now but i don't know if i'll keep them um but i'm not going to transfer the live rock but i am the the rock that is in my water box that is probably two feet long well probably 18 inch square more or less that is going into the new tank so it'll be kind of instantly cycled in a way although i'm going to do the red sea um uh, cycling bacteria process thing because yeah. that's basically the same as i did on the reef cat i actually quite liked that process. yeah I, I did it i liked it as well um, yeah. Although what I did, what I did realize was, so when I set up my current tank, my Peninsula 500, I didn't have an ugly stage. I uh, and I, and that was partly because I I did I put some bottled bacteria in, put a fish in from day one, but I also transferred some live rock from my existing tank, and yeah. that's effectively what I'm doing on this one. Um, so I'm hoping that I mean it'll be okay. But I actually really think that the reason I struggle so much with so the tanks I set up previously were I had used vast quantities of live rock. It yeah. had no pests on it, so there's no reason not to like transfer like and it genuinely no aptasia, nothing on them. I, I I look back now and think I was incredibly lucky because I bought that rock secondhand. I had no idea what I was doing, and it just it just came with no pests. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um Whereas this tank was far more sterile. Like it was a bottle of bacteria. You put the fish in. It's not the same. It just isn't. Um, and I, that's what I'm wondering if you will struggle because if you used a lot of live rock before and you're using a small amount this time, I wonder if it's going to be the same. It's still, a. It's. I mean, for the size of the tank, it's not a lot, but there's a significant amount. It's literally 18 inches wide, 18 inches front to back. Oh, okay. So and, it is a lot. About a foot tall. So it's a lot. There's been, And it's been in that tank for... About 14 months, I think. So there's, I was there's thinking you were there. going to put like a little bit in the sump. Oh, no, no. I did that <laughs> in the reef. Like tiny little cube. No, this is this is a lot going in. Yeah. Um, it's probably about a quarter of the overall scape, but still, it's, it's a, it should be okay, <laughs> he says. Yeah. But like you say, all tanks are different, and uh, yeah. who knows? You're going to be you're gonna be like, oh, Ryan, everything's fine. I don't even know what you're worried about. <laughs> yeah, and then two seconds later, dinos, algae, <laughs> cyanobacteria, the works. It, it definitely pushes you to your limit sometimes. Yeah. Like, I, and it's definitely, so I think the first six months probably are the most dangerous time for a reefer with regards to leaving the hobby. <laughs> because sometimes you can have relative success for like the first four months and you're like, oh, well, I've never had an ugly stage. Everything's going fine. I'm not sure why people are so worried, which is yeah, exactly what happened in the water that. box. I never had a like an ugly stage for months and months and months. And then all of a sudden it was like, bam. <laughs> well, that's it with so excuse me. People keep asking um for updates on the um the reef cata tank, which I'm just trying to see when I set it up exactly when. What's the date on that first video? Uh where's the date on these videos? Doesn't they actually say oh, uh it's it's sweet November. Video. It's sweet that your that your followers still are, are still asking you for updates. Mine gave up long a time ago. <laughs> we'll come back onto that. But, you, but so this I set up on around the twenty fourth of November, and it, so that's it's been three months now. Then, and I don't have I've got a tiny like when you when the the lights are off and like the room lights are on and so the the, the light is yellow. Yeah. You can see a little like a little six o'clock shadow of um of, of algae yeah. uh, but there's no there's no like hair algae or anything i haven't had an ugly stages yet but and i can I, i'll do an update at some point but i don't want to do an update now because i'll be saying oh look it's fine yeah but three months is still early <laughs> as far as i'm concerned if your tank has got to the stage where it's growing hair algae that is like the perfect position to be in because usually it means you've gone through everything else well that's you just yeah. put a tang in <laughs> Yeah, I did. That's how I put an urchin in today. Yeah, uh, to a small one. But I did. I do think. I think it will actually be okay. And I found that. Um, I just. I think it'll be all right. And I think I've got through all the, the worst of it. But uh, but who knows? I've not tested that tank for ages. <laughs> and the plan is, I'm really enjoying. Like at the moment, I don't. I didn't have to do a water change on my main tank today because when I'm taking out the corals, it's basically a water change anyway. I've done, like I did a, I gave away like 40 liters of water last week. So I didn't have to do a water change on that. My yeah. Cade is doing better without water changes at the moment because I've got that little mat of 
cyano or whatever it is yeah, and, that, yeah. and since i've left it for a few weeks it started to fade away so maybe it's a nutrient thing i don't know so i only have to do water changes on my water box and it's brilliant it's so nice having to do one water change instead of four <laughs> yeah. yeah once the once your main tank's empty you 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 won't want to get another one <laughs> i know it's gonna be like so nice. oh, it's much easier <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah it's gonna be good for a, a little bit um how does waterbox feel about you not doing weekly updates as promised you didn't promise i know yeah there was there was um that yeah they waterbox have actually never ever contacted me again after like they got so the tank yeah, yeah and that's that's the ideal thing the other yeah. thing is you have to remember like that is my main tank so they will they will have was well, not my, you know what i'm saying it's like my house yeah. tank so they will have updates as, and i'm not going to get rid of that tank ever if you see what i mean i can't i'm not i'm not gonna upgrade it's a beautiful tank i'm not gonna like it's perfect basically for the tank that i want so yeah. they will just have like continuously have updates for years for as long as i have it for years so i don't think they're worried about that plus everyone gets an update on here all the time they get an update <laughs> on instagram occasionally yeah. <laughs> instagram, but on here you don't show it and not showing no. it is what matters but it's yeah. the same with, with the tank that i'm getting I disagree. Old... I don't think showing is what matters. I think the fact that we, that I, well, both of us have a discussion about a brand, which is then putting that brand into people's minds every single week. So that when they, yeah. when they're thinking, oh, what tank should I have? Those two, those two idiots that are on that live stream every week. Oh, sorry. One idiot and one stable genius. And Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, they, uh, yeah, they, they talk about waterbox. I'll have a look into that. It, but it, seeing is believing. So it's, if you've got the tank there, no one's going to buy a, a Peninsula 500 off this back of this video. But if I was sat with the tank behind me, it's more likely. So yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. But it's really, I love that um, that they don't pester you and they don't say, Ryan, mate, uh, you agreed to do 50 videos or whatever. Where you've only done 49. Where's the other? I love that because you don't feel any pressure. And actually, and so with the tank I'm getting, I'll make a few videos doing the setup. But to be completely honest, if those videos don't do really well um i'll drop off i won't make as many if they do well i'll keep going if people want to watch them i'll keep making them. if people don't want to watch them there's no point making them i'll make some still but I, even if i so let's say for the sake of argument i make three videos and the, the company who give me the tank might not be satisfied with that but the reality is that what they will be satisfied with and i know this because i've talked to them <laughs> is that that video that, that tank will be in 90 percent of my videos because when i yeah, yeah. When I try to, if I want to make a, a video about lights, I'll like, here's, here's my lights, this is my tank. And so it's just, it's like naturally, and it's good for me to be able to show that. And it's good for them that I do show it. So it's kind of, that's the best type because then it's, you're not, I'm not like trying to push and sell. I don't feel like I have to sell it. It's just yeah. there. <laughs> I have a question for the people in the comment section. How many people know the brand of my tank, but don't know the brand of the tank behind Alex? So don't say what it is, okay? Because obviously you it's said see, you said seeing is believing. So, well, I can see your tank, but I bet there's people who don't know what that tank is. Do you know uh, what brand? Yeah, don't say in the comments what it Mine is. Tank. Oh, for God's yes. sake! People are putting oh, in the comments now. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, no, but but don't know what. No, that I can't think about a word that. Um, I talk about that. It's a cade. <laughs> I talk about it. I talk about it. We've ruined it. And I always say the cade because it's easiest to. That's the easiest way to. Um... We have one person who said no. I'm assuming he says says no. Look, know, this please. isn't this isn't like a thing. Right. This is about if you right. don't know, not if you do know. <laughs> yeah, but um, but no, it's I, I like I like that waterbox don't pester you. I think that's brilliant because if they yeah. if they pester you. It, that you then feel obliged it's like you're, you're not making a video because you want to you're making one because they're trying to push you whereas if you don't want to it'll be more natural it's better for everybody so the other thing that i do know as well um i i think i know of six people who have bought water boxes and these are just the people who told me they bought them because they saw my video and because i had one yeah. so if that's six people that i just happen to have spoken to how many people have bought them that haven't told me they bought them if you see what i mean mm. And mm. let's put it this way, the cost of building that tank and the cost, the profit on six tanks would have paid for itself. Yeah, so you, so it's like, you see, you see what I mean? And the, as I said, they're going to have advertising forever. Like, when I say forever, mm. I mean... Like, well, those videos are up on... Once you put yeah, something yeah, on the internet... Yeah, they're, they're forever. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah. Um, 
what was it? What else was he saying? Oh, so that that is my weekend reefing, by the way. I haven't, done, I haven't got anything else. Um, but one thing I did realize, right, uh, that I saw today, I'm gonna have to sue reef builders. Not good. That's right. I'm coming for you because what I saw today was, and they put this isn't the first time they've done it. This is from this is from reef builders. Yeah. This week this week in reefing. I'm sorry. I thought I invented week in reefing. Oh, I see. <laughs> So, yeah, but they said works. this week in reefing, not week in reefing. Yeah, that's because um, they tr- they think they're being clever and they're trying to change it enough so I can't sue them, but I can. Well, I've looked it up, and this is a million dollar lawsuit. So, why do you need to look it up? Because you're like, aren't you like the UK's number one like person who sues people, like lawyer oh, person? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to have to sue someone else as well, Ryan. Is it me? <laughs> no, it's Made Ned Aquatics. Not good. Uh, and this is even worse, even more blatant. Because what they've started doing... It's is, just a picture of you. <laughs> now, this video on the left here, Maidenhead Aquatics news headlines. Yeah. And they, they've done this two or three times now. Oh, they've got the news. The news. I invented news. Yeah. Okay. All right? You can't just yeah. copy it. You need my permission. If you want to run news, license it for me. So. Do you know what, do you know what happened to me? Uh, it happened a few times this happened. And you would think, like, why would you pick me as the person? So people were taking pictures of corals, which I took pictures of from from my website other fish shops and using them on their website it's like if ever (laughs) if ever there's like some proper prop like like some like the most well recognized pictures from if you see what i mean like it would be my ones wouldn't it like if it's a uk (laughs) why would you pick my ones to put on your website because then people just message me going this shop is using your pictures which shop was it I'm not. Te- I don't want to mention it. Do, I bet I know which one it is. You won't. Oh, okay. Fair you, enough. As in, you, it, I think it would surprise you if you knew which one it was. Oh, okay. Interesting. You can take a guess. Uh, no, because I'm not playing that game. Uh, yeah. And now, oh, bollocks. <laughs> John Wright's point out, BBC are going to sue me. That's true. But That's if you true. go back and look at the first time we did news and go back at the first time we did BBC did news, I yeah. don't, we've been doing it a while. We were first, yeah. That's true. This is a 30, we episode thirty-seven. So, yeah. how many how many BBC newsers have there been? Thirty-seven episodes. We have spoken about mm. nonsense for thirty-seven episodes. <laughs> you yeah. you say it's 70, 74 hours. Seventy-four what? hours of how much of my life have I wasted? <laughs> that's Invested. three whole days. Um, but actually, so uh, so. Joking aside, the, um, the I was going to mention this uh, last week. The, the, the uh, Maidenhead Aquatics news, they've started doing a monthly news update. And I was going to talk about this in the news. So you can subscribe to the Maidenhead Aquatics YouTube channel if you want their news. A lot of it is freshwater. Um, and some of it is is basically talking about Maidenhead Aquatics news. But it's still worth, if you're into, if you're into, if you watch any old rubbish on you, not that it's any old rubbish. If you watch everything, <laughs> like, <laughs> if you watch everything on YouTube like I do, uh, then it's if worth. If you watch any worth. old rubbish on YouTube, <laughs> like Ryan's channel, <laughs> I, heard, I heard it as I started saying it. No, go go and watch. Uh, you can subscribe to the Men and Aquatic sign, and they do a, a, a monthly uh, news update. Um, although when uh, they've paid out the million dollar lawsuit, they won't be True. doing it anymore. So you know. you'll you'll own them by the end of this, won't you? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, so what else is coming up? Right. So next up then is member questions. Um, and there's actually one thing I was going to pull up on the Facebook page, uh, which is something you text me a picture of earlier. Um, and I'm not going to start a picture with that. Of earlier. I'll, I'll tell you. We'll tell you. Member questions first off. So um, there's one thing from oh, Nano, Na- Nano. Yeah. Nano Nana. Who I'm going to come back to you. We're going to do that at the when we get to the news. But the, the the questions were first one was from I like weird fish. He says, "Will you be visiting reefprostore.com? You ever heard of that? Me no. neither. They have the market cornered in stupidly expensive but ugly fish. <laughs> uh, they also have a reputation for delivering dead fish and not paying people back. That is not my. <laughs> I was going to say words. I'm not sure you should be reading this out because because that sounds <laughs> terrible like... and you you don't know, do you? <laughs> No, what they call no reefprostore.com. Check out their 15 grand tricolor scopus. Well, so that's that's uh, <laughs> that is those are not my words. <laughs> okay, I'm just reading out something that this guy said. But now no, you're I, gonna I, get sued. <laughs> no, I've never I've never heard of Repro Store, but it's I presume it's an American site because he's talking it about is, yeah, I'm yeah. So, but no, never heard of it. But um, if they sell a fifteen thousand dollar fish, I'm unlikely to visit it. 
Um, I think they quarantine their fish, which is why they, I think that I'm just having a look now. Um, I wonder if it's who's the guy that BRS uses. Um, oh, I, they uh, no, it's not. It's not them. That's some. That's marine, isn't that marine, marine collectors? collectors? Marine collectors. Yeah. They do have a fifteen thousand pound, a fifteen thousand dollar white uh, tricolor Scopus tang, which is like white. It's worth. It's worth having a Google later. <laughs> okay. Maybe the you one can thing, do it now if you want, but maybe later. The one thing I will so that so that statement, the guy who said they have a reputation for delivering dead fish and not paying people back, I'd be pretty surprised if that's if that's the case. If it's a high end place like that, yeah, that, you don't. You, you, that's the first, the fast way to ruin your business. And and people who can afford fifteen thousand pounds for a fish are very principled. So if you piss yeah. them around, you lose their business. So I'd be amazed if that's the case. But every now and then someone will say something like that. Like someone said um, something about frag box corals yeah. and they were, they, they messaged me and say, oh, they were awful. And it's like every, every now and then you'll come across someone who has a bad um, experience. Frag box. I've everybody I've ever spoken to loves frag box yeah. because they're wicked on YouTube. They, they've got a good reputation, that sort of stuff. And uh, every now and then you'll come across someone who will have a bad experience and they'll post something like that. And it's like, I'm not going to pay any attention to that because that, I, I don't know what your what your um your biases are. <laughs> that, that, that's what the problem with with that sort of statement is that people the, in this day and age it's too easy for people's reputations to be yeah, ruined. Yeah. So if that was true, I can't imagine they'd have a lot of customers. If you see there's, what I mean, I don't no, know. I don't know anything about this this company. If you see what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, but if yeah, like. It's the same as with I don't, I don't want to get into it anyway. So, but you 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 see what I mean? Like yeah. in this day and age, people will post anything and everything online, and it's like a fire that usually gets more and more and more attention. So, like I don't know. Uh, uh, there's a there's a few people comment. Look, as I don't I, I want to move on from this because I don't think it's fair. I don't know this company, and I don't think it's that's fair. the same person who who's saying the same thing. But How anyway, look, yeah, yeah. Nice cat, Alex, uh, says Reef Adventure. Uh, so more questions. And Lysia Reese says, I have one small 90 litre tank that had a white spot outbreak that was full of my corals. I've moved the fish out of that tank to treat them so it's fallow. I've set up a 250 litre tank and, want it, and wanted to use some of the corals from the 90 litre in the new one. Dot, dot, dot. Is there any way of dipping or other methods that I can use on those corals to ensure no parasites get transferred? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think the you've got to if it's fishless then and i don't know if this is all uh parasites but most parasites have to have or sorry let's rephrase that ick for example white spot has to have a fish host to live so if if it's if there's no fish in the in the water for 90 days or whatever it is i can't remember the period i think it's like three or three months i think it is yeah I know, not, I think so it's, for whatever yeah, it is then they can't exist beyond that because they need to find a fish host. So in yeah. theory, with Ick at least, um, if you leave it long enough, you can then transfer it across safely. I yeah. don't know if that's the case with, with other diseases. So I wouldn't be confident telling you. That sounds like it's the sort of thing that I think I would probably be okay with, but I don't I wouldn't I I don't know, so I wouldn't be confident telling you, I'm afraid. Um, but someone has replied to you, so go and go and have a look um uh, on that when uh, when you finish with this. No, we're get it's interesting because look, we're getting and this isn't a criticism. Six We're getting months. different things come in on the chat for different amounts of days. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm, I, as I said, I, I think I left the the war talks for three months. I think, but maybe I, that was overkill. Yeah. Uh, and no worries. Uh, I, I like weird fish. I'm just, I'm just saying for you know, I'm not, not having to go. You. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I think you realise. Anyway. Um. So next one was JJS who says I am looking to add a specific fish. But my question is about minimum. Oh, I like this question. Minimum tank sizes in general. He's got an innovative marine 100 gallon, 100 gallon. So it probably is less than that. Uh, it's a 48 inch by 24 by 20. He wants a female Genocanthus melanospilos, which I think is the swallowtail angel. It is, one. yeah. I'm um, sure. But it seems every site that you look on is in agreement that it needs at least 125 gallons long term. Um, uh, his, la his last tank was 150 tall. Uh, 150 gallon 48 inches tall no 48 inches by 24 by 30 do those 10 inches in height really matter or would my fish have been too small blah, blah, blah. so with one thing with that is tank fish fish sizes uh, for in terms of tanks most of the websites will say 
hundred gallon um, uh, is the minimum. Yeah. And, and when you look at, uh, if you go on the a website, if you go on the Red Sea website and look up a Red Sea reefer 250, it will say it's 250 liters, but that's total system volume. And yeah. that's total system volume before displacement. So before you put in rocks, corals, all that sort of stuff. So actually the display tank is much, much less. And the, 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 the guides that say, you must have 125 gallons. That means 125 gallons of swimming space. Yeah. But the other thing to say is it's not an exact science. I never so, thought of it like that. I genuinely have never really? thought of it as 125 gallons of swimming space. Okay. I yeah. have literally just I just thought that's at that tank size, whatever you put in it, I understand that you could fill it with rocks. So there's no swimming space. But I've always just I've never taken the in, uh, rock into consideration I, I, I don't i don't mean rock Re rock isn't really that's not really relevant to be honest it's the yeah. but it's the there's the size of the of the display tank so forget yeah. if you oh got yeah, a, yeah 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 you've got a, a 200 gallon tank 100 gallons is in the in the sump 100 gallons is in the main tank it's not a 200 gallon tank for the yeah, purpose yeah. of choosing fish is what i'm saying yes, but um but so with but the other thing is it's not an exact science so all the websites that say this fish needs 125 gallons well, what does that mean? That's just a random figure, isn't it? It's not completely random, but it's not like if you buy a 125 gallon tank and this fish, it will be fine. And I tend to play with those rules. So I but I have plenty of fish that if you look at the, the minimum recommended tank size, it's way bigger than, than my tank. But short and medium term is generally fine. But you do have to be prepared to move them on if they get too big, because some fish do get too big. And it some affects fish it. also don't get too big as well as in <laughs> like their estimated size they never get to that for some reason not not all some of them definitely do but for example my 17 year old purple tang is like this big even though it's always been in a thousand liter tank just never just, and and that that would be considered acceptable for a purple tang <laughs> whereas i have another purple tang which is like double the size of it and probably yeah. younger <laughs> it's funny isn't it yeah um, but so I, I, well, I personally would uh, four foot tank, uh, swallowtail angel. I'd get it. Although the females get quite big. Um, the females are usually the small ones. Males get quite big in that. Yeah, case. the males. One, yeah, one yeah. of them gets big. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but I, I would be okay with that. I, I do that all the time, and I, I don't, I, I don't think I've given up looking at, at minimum guides. I still look at them, but I don't take it as a hard and fast rule. I've got on my 150 liter water box. I've got a, a cold, not a cold tank, a tummy tank. And I don't know what um, minimum tank size it is, but I bet it's more than 150 litres. Yes, definitely. <laughs> five years' time, that would be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to be in there in five years' time. But now it's fine. So I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't think you can just look at it and say, Live Aquarius says 125 gallons, therefore 125 gallons is insufficient. But you should pay attention to it. And it's probably better to be cautious than... Uh, than gung ho like I am. <laughs> I also people often upgrade. I think over a period of time, especially if it's in the time it takes to get to a, a full big fish size, mm. they people have usually upgraded a few times over, over that period. Well, I did. When I say people, I'm referring to my own experience. <laughs> um, Most people upgrade. Don't, there aren't many people who buy a tank and then keep it for <laughs> ten years. Have you ever had a fish which has outgrown your tank? Um. I don't actually think so. You know, I had a fish but that this, got. This, my... this is what I mean. I think people often pay attention to that, but has anyone had a fish that's outgrown their tank? <laughs> the people will do, but I. Of I, course, I, it's a minority. I, I think. I had a um, a harlequin tusk fish that was that, that was in that I put it in, and it should never have gone in there in the first place. <laughs> so it outgrew it immediately. But that was that's different. I had yeah. a purple tang that got too aggressive. But that's just because that's what he is, you know. So, and again, that was probably more a case of he shouldn't have been in there in the first place. So I don't think I've ever had a fish that I've bought. It's grown too big and I've had to move on. But I have seen, I saw the other day on, on YouTube, there was a, I can't remember what it was, but someone was was tang policing this guy. Yeah. And he had, I think it was like a four foot tank and the, they had a dory, a, a hippo tank. And it was big. Yeah. And someone was like, ah, no, it's too big. It makes me sad, all this sort of stuff. And so, but, and so it does happen, but I don't think it's ever happened to me. I can't think of a time when it has. Yeah, as, as no, I look, I definitely had when I had the thousand liter tank um, before the power cut. I definitely, I think you get so used to seeing the fish that you don't actually notice them grow. 
And then sometimes when someone else comes in that knows what they're doing, they go, oh, that's a big sale in Tang. You go, oh, because I remember buying it this big. <laughs> so now there's like this big. I just it just you don't notice it so much, mm -hmm. um, which is why I think it gives you an illusion that fish don't outgrow the tank. If you see what I mean, I, for example, I saw... you're, you're, you have some uh, well, I don't know if you still have them, but you had a, a yellow ras, which is like when I saw it, I was like, that's the biggest yellow ras I've ever seen, because normally uh... you see them they're like this, aren't yeah. they? But you probably don't notice it anymore because you've had it for exactly. so long. It's like it's like if you've got a, a kid and uh, your parents don't see it for six months, they come along and go, oh, hasn't he grown? You know, like, oh, has he? Yeah. You don't notice. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. Like the same, you know. um, so that's that's, a, that's an interesting point. Um, the Rasses, uh, they were fine, to be fair, in that tank. But I bet they would oh, have yeah, been happy. Yeah. bet they would have been happier in a, in a longer tank. It's always better to, to err on the side of course. People often ask about, I get asked quite a lot on YouTube on the comment section, is I I want a twenty liter tank? Can I put two clownfish in? And so I was like, eh, it's quite small. When I had the Fluval Evo, that was forty liters after displacement. It advertises at fifty three liters, but it's not. That was I had two clownfish in there, and that was okay. But that was a probably too small, if anything. I wouldn't yeah. want to go any smaller. And if you've got a tank that's twenty or thirty, even on my little Marif Casa, how many? I think that's about thirty or forty liters. And I've got a, a mimic filefish in there. That's, he's too. He's that that tank's too small for him. He's happy. I don't know, so I don't know how what the adult size of a mimic filefish is. I don't think they get too big, but I bet it's. I bet it'll say double that size is the minimum recommended. So a thirty gallon or larger is the recommended size. For... Oh, mine's that's about. No, it's not. No, no, it's about half that. No, no, it's half that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, it's right. It's half. Um, and a maximum size of ten centimeters or four inches. Wow, that's big. I'd be surprised if he gets that big. But um, but cool. But that yeah, but it's yeah. like how you think four inches is big. We <laughs> <laughs> we were doing so well. We managed uh, to get so far, like an hour and twenty six minutes in by being smart. serious. Um, but anyway, I think that was the last um, last question from the uh, from the chat. Uh, so yeah, it was yeah. But I, I so I just think uh, just to finish that one off, really, I think I tend to go. I, I'm I don't get put off by um, tank size guides, but it, the, the the bigger issue is for me. I think there there are a few issues, right? So if you're putting a fish in that's too big, well, the issues when knowing if your tank is overstocked is can your tank cope with a bio load? Yeah. I have you put 10 tangs in a, a four foot tank and your nutrients are going crazy because you've got to feed loads. Is there enough hiding space? Uh, Cause they fish need their own spots to sleep and their own spots to stay away from trouble. Is there enough swimming space? And that depends. Some fish uh, occupy different areas and all that sort of stuff. And are they aggressive? If they're aggressive, then the tank needs to be even bigger. To, so, you know, so there's various things to consider. It's not just as simple. I don't think as, Live Aquarius says this, so that's right. But they, the reason they do that is because it's a useful rough estimate. I I also think it depends on what the type of the like what fish it is as well, yeah. because I wouldn't worry about a Tamini's tang's adult size, but I would worry about a group like a yeah, oh, and a you know, like, like a <laughs> yeah. leopard grouper. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think it's a leopard one with the white with the black spots. Oh, is it? There's, yeah, panther, panther, panther group. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes. Yeah. I would worry about that. Because even though you get those little tiny ones, they do grow big, if you see what I mean. A dragon um, rat. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Rock but mover. Then again, so, obviously, yeah. they probably have a much larger adult size as well yeah. than a Tamini. Well, they definitely do than a Tamini tank. So that probably is needs to be taken into consideration too. There's only so much. But even small, so like I've got a white-tailed coal tank, and that's a relatively small tank. He's still quite big. Yeah. He's a, I've had him probably two, three years, probably three years now, and he's not small. Um, well, he's going to be coming to me soon, isn't he? He is. He's he, munching on all your corals with a bit of luck. No, no, he's not the one I'm worried about. It's the rabbit fish I'm worried about. Yeah, I'm giving him a pep talk. I've told, I keep showing him photos of the nicest. I've got your website up, and I show him, I do sort by price high to low, and I show yes. him, and I'm like, see that one that says 300 next to it? That's delicious. So yeah. tasty. Yeah, so you want to go for what that? Rabbit, what rabbit fish is it? I can't even remember. Is a it, is it a Siganus, it's Oh, um, a two barred, I think is the common name. Two barred or, mm -hmm. or variegated Siganus, I don't even know, can't remember what it is, what the Latin name is now, but it's so cool. I've had it, so he's, he's been in my tank with um, acans, chalices, oh, I know hammer, 
He's never touched him. I, uh, ugly, ugly fish. Ugly, get out. Ugly. Get out. Like, that is one of the, uh, of all the rabbit fish you could get, that's the ugliest one. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of you. How do you I tried to get rid of me, me and then you got right, rid of okay. you instead. He's gone, guys. I, how can I mute him? There you go, I've muted him. Yeah, done. Don't want that. Rubbish. I, <sighs> you should show people. Ugly. Show people, because this is one of those situations. This is so what I am just to, to to clarify what I'm saying. I'm saying that there are basically every other rabbit fish is nicer than that one. What's up with the bloody live aquarium? Every time I get try to go on it lately, it does this. I don't know if it's just a UK thing, it must be. Anyway, look at that ugly rabbit ugly. fish for heaven's sake. Ugly, you, that's the one. Look at that. Any it's other so rabbit cool. fish is nicer than that fish, basically. He's got a funny face, I'll give you that. But look at the little blue spots and the it's so no, silver. No, that's body. like a very subtle, like it basically every other fish you can get is better than that fish. <laughs> he has got, I would say he's got a face like a welder's bench. He's mostly a, white for a start. Silver. But apart from that, he's a cool fish. But I'm not gonna ask because I'm not gonna ask in the <laughs> chat because it's people... interesting compared to the average freshwater fish. Oh, that's that's an absolute savage attack. That is, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I love, but lots, lots of people think that uh, don't like fox faces, like one spot fox face, think they're really boring. I think they're really cool. They're still nicer than that fish. At least they're really? like bright yeah. yellow. Oh, yeah, man. I love yeah. that. I think he's, he's one of my favorite fish. I love him. He's really, he's peaceful. He's anyway. Um, wow, that's a nice looking fish, says this guy. Um, reef uh, fox faces aren't really reef safe, they are. I think they're they're a risk. My my take on um uh rabbit fish and fox faces is they are probably a 90% ch there's a 90% chance they'll be okay. But there's a 10% chance they won't. That is not and what I have found in my experience. <laughs> when they get bigger, they're more likely to go rogue. There there's there, this is not one of those situations where it's like an internet myth will they eat corals? They do. And and when they yeah. do, they go crazy for it. But I think most of them are fine. Maybe not for their whole lives. <laughs> most of them are fine most of the time, is my my opinion on that. I think they're about as reef safe as like a coral beauty, if I'm honest. Um, mm -hmm. I think that yeah, more, they're more than that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> well, I think they are fine with some corals and not others. So basically, it just ha you're having a good experience with them because you haven't given them the corals that it's willing to eat. <laughs> Akins. Uh, Acans are usually one of the top ones on that list. Exactly. Um, so is... But the other thing that I notice with them is sometimes they don't actually eat the coral; they eat the slime off the corals. Yeah, okay. So it's, uh, it's more that they're irritating it than actually eating it. And but when, either yeah. way, it still causes it to die. Well, there have been times when I fragged SPS corals, particularly around a barley green slimer. They go over and, and eat the slime. They love that. But I've never yeah. seen them pestering it to get slime, if you know what I mean. Oh, so. I, I have. I've seen, they. I had to move one because it was doing it to trachophilias. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be gutty. But that, and yeah. that's the thing, because that, because I'm moving to LPS in the new tank. My plan is to have two rabbit fish, but I'm well aware that I'm going to need a, a fish trap on hand just in case. Because if when you if SPS tank, that's one thing. But if you're going for LPS, that's definitely a bigger risk. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway. Um, I, I think I've had like five over the years, and some of them are have been better than others. Uh, I think the worst one was the bicolor fox face. Um, I had a, a I think is it magnificent or I think it's a magnificent. I had one of those, and I've had a, a one spot and um, uh, just one the one spot one without the one spot. <laughs> so just yeah. a little yellow one. Fox face low? No, that's the one spot. Just I don't know. Fox face. No, I think fox, fox face low is the one without. How oh, is black, it? I think maybe. Yeah, maybe I can't remember. There's there's like three or four that look almost identical, but they are they 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 like they're again as something they're, they're different. They've got a different yeah, yeah. Latin name or scientific name. Whatever it is. Um. Anyway, we're gonna move on because otherwise we'll be all, all, all week. True. Uh, the one last thing I wanted to pull up from the Facebook page was uh, this guy. Um. Oh, sorry, Charles might be a lady. Uh, posted. Uh, this is a bold statement. <laughs> More controversial wallpaper than my bird wallpaper, I would mm. suggest. Uh, with um, copper banded butterflies, a wrasse of some kind, a purple tang, and uh, what are they called um, Bangai cardinals. Uh, what's that called? Uh, uh, but the um, the uh, butterfly banner fish. fish. Banner fish. That's the one. And a clown tang. I was, what, I was like, is he going to call that a Moorish idol? <laughs> no. What's this? That's is that a Soho? 
as a clown. Uh, well, if it's yellow and blue, it's a clown tang. Can't if it's tell. black and white, it's a Soho. But it looks like no. Yeah, it's pretty sure it's a clown tang. Okay, there you go. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So more controversial than mine. But I won't be. Uh, and I the am chances be... are that person is watching because they've taken a picture of them mm -hmm. watching us. <laughs> yeah. So they might be watching right now. So they're going to be they, there's there's now there's them watching us watching us watching them. Or... Yes, true. <laughs> my, my my brain's frying. Um, but no. So I'm getting I'm getting rid of the wallpaper pretty soon. Um, I should just say. Let me just have a quick. And you're replacing it with that wallpaper, aren't you? I am not. It's just going to be a white wall. Six hours, and this powerhead is still going. Very exciting half, for everyone. A half charged, which is now looking like it's going to run out soon. Uh, but yeah, that's that is exciting. Anyway. Uh, right, so that was the last thing on the, uh, people, the, think the that, people think that's your your wallpaper, I think, because they're saying what an improvement on the bird wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Literally anything is better than the bird wallpaper. Ah, Philistines, the lightyear. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so that's the Facebook and member questions. I almost called you Christian then. Um, Ryan, <laughs> what's mm -hmm. your name? That yeah. brings us on to the Prestige Reef Fish of the Week. Oh, I, don't, I was waiting for a jingle, but there isn't one, is there? No. So when you do that, I always go, is there a jingle? No. <laughs> uh, right. So the Fish of the Week this week is a Catalina Gobi. Um, and I'm just going to interrupt you quickly, because what I realized when I brought this up was this is the Reef Builders website, and it says Awesome Fish Spotlight, which is basically Fish of the Week. And this was <laughs> this was from 2016. So now they're going to counter sue me for stealing Fish of the Week after they stole Reef Week and Reef. Mm, so. I don't know, because Awesome Fish Spotlight and Fish of the Week sound very different. It's the same thing. So we're just, I think this is going to be like a back and forth in court for years. Probably. And really yeah. acrimonious, like, you know, but anyway. Sorry, carry on. Catalina Gobi. Uh, so, yeah, so the reason I've gone for this is there's actually two reasons. I like to show fish uh, in this section that people don't wouldn't necessarily always see, but also that they should be aware of. So this fish I have seen in fish shops before, not very often, but they come from very, very deep water. 75 meters, so it they, says, which is very deep. Yes, yeah. So they don't do very well uh, in warmer temperatures because obviously it's colder the deeper you go. Um, so they usually need a tank of a rep, like around 24 degrees rather than sort of... Cooler than that, I bet. Uh, I'm pretty sure it says 24 on that. Actual oh, no, no, it does, yeah. 65 to 75 yeah. or 24 degrees C. No, 65, yeah. hang on. 65 F in C. That's eight. 65 is 18. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying 75 is... 75 like, is 24. So 24 is... If you want to have a a a, a, a reef... You can have success at 24. Absolute um, max, though, is what is what. I yeah, is so. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you want to have coral and you want to have this fish, you're gonna to have to have your tank at 24 degrees. If you have your tank at 18, probably not gonna be successful. No, <laughs> you have a success with the true. fish, but not so much the coral. There's um, a few gobies like that, little um, gobies that, that live in cooler waters. There's another one. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what's called, but it's a cool fish. I've, you do see them from time to time. And because they're tiny, they they look like they make good nano tank fish, uh, but they're probably not. <laughs> yeah, I have. They were there was one in Maidenhead and Crawley ages ago. I remember seeing. I was like, that is a really cool. Like I I knew what it was, but I didn't. Um, I'd not seen one for a long time. I was like, that's the sort of fish that if there was more of them, the loads of people would have them. But if they're coming from seventy five meters deep, some of them they can't be that easy to catch. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the point. And they're tiny. <laughs> so why aren't they really, really like unbelievably expensive? Which is what usually happens. Yeah. When they, must... when they're deep water fish, they're usually like crazy expensive. Because you get the bends basically collecting them, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, seventy five meters is a long way. Like, let's, so standard scuba diving, I think, is twenty or thirty. Thirty, I think. 30, is yeah. I think if you water. don't have a license, you can go to twenty, and if you do have a scuba diving license, you can go to thirty. Eighteen and then thirty, but thirty is the paddy yeah. open water. I think it's called. So yeah, more than double that. Seventy five yeah. meters. What's that? Three hundred feet? No. Yeah, just under three hundred feet. Wow. Probably three hundred feet. I, it always boggles my mind have you ever watched on youtube if you've not done this like anyone who's listening go on youtube and type in hand collecting marine fish these people are like ninjas underwater with a little net <laughs> you literally see them chasing a fish sometimes they'll get the between like two different like bombies i think is what they call them and you just think how are they i can't even catch a fish in oh. a tank <laughs> 
how are they getting them underwater while having to swim where the fish can get away? Now, they, mm. they do use nets in some cases, but I, I saw one that was uh, chasing a an Atlantic blue tang, and it was unbelievable how this man caught this fish. So if, um, yeah, now try imagine doing that down 75 meters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, there's just a quick question I'm going to pop up about talking about battery backups from earlier. Steve Webb says, I can't believe... Uh, you're still looking for the battery backups when Tunzi switcher is so easy to set up and not only for Tunzi pumps. The reason I'm doing it, so if I if I set up, when I set up my new tank, if I get rid of the MP40s, which I might do, but probably won't, but if I do get rid of them, I'll set up, the, I'll use a Tunzi safety connector. I've looked it up. It's a bit of a faff, but I can do it. But the reason I'm doing this going to so many lengths is because 90%, probably 99% of reefers won't use a tunzi safety connector because when you when you when you start you look up the guides it says you've got to run the batteries in series and uh, then you've got to connect this to that and it, people are like no i'm not doing that it's too much i can't i can't work it out so i this isn't for me well, it's partly for me but i yeah. want to i want to get something that is as easy to use for the average reefer as the ecotech battery backup but that can work without ecotech stuff and this is not to replace the ecotech but for people who who can't have got a tank that's too small for example so that's why i'm doing it because i want to find something that is an easy solution that is just as easy because if it's slightly difficult most people won't won't do it yeah whereas if it's really easy and i can show people how easy it is if i can find that <laughs> then loads of people will do it and so it will help so that's why i'm doing it most people won't bother with the hassle you're going to buy loads of them in Put a little reef dog sticker on them and then sell them for double the cost, aren't you? So Good the thought, idea. The thought did cross my mind, but yeah. the reality is, you think I'm going to sell something that's electrical and no way, I'm not put my name that's, to that. Like, that's true. I, yeah. the, the whole point of this, I'm not doing that. I'll, I might put an Amazon link in the description or whatever, but I'm doing it because I think it, if you can find something that's easy to do for people, yeah. more people will use it and fewer people will have tank wipeouts. Whereas if, if I make a video, if I bought the Tunzi safety connector and made an instructional video on how to do that, it would be really complicated. No one's going to, people, like some people might do it, but it's too complicated. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, and lots of other done, people. Sorry. We've done Fish of the Week, haven't we? So we must yeah, do a yeah, Coral yeah. of the Week now. Oh, I don't like your Coral of the Week. Well, I don't know. <laughs> It, right, so my coral of the week this week is an elephant ear mushroom. And the reason I picked elephant ear mushrooms is because one of them turned up in one of the boxes um, of the corals I bought recently. And I was like, is that just a really big mushroom? Because it's, it's it, so it looks way better than that one. That's an ugly one. <laughs> um, my, it does look, it looks much better than, than that. But um, when I saw it, it was the same size as all the other mushrooms. And I was like, what, like, like, like a, an inch yeah, across. Yeah. So I've seen them when they're massive, but this one's like this. Yeah. But I recognize, I'm like, that is definitely what I think it is. And it's growing really, really quickly. Because they're eating all your fish. <laughs> no, no, it's not eating any of my fish so far. So this um, is although, a, this is potentially a coral eater, though, right? Not a coral eater. It could potentially eat. Sorry, fish, fish eater, coral yeah. eater, fish. The, yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing is, how have you got that? Is there not a better picture? Of the reason I've got this is so I made one of my videos that's done really well was top 10 corals you'll regret or whatever it was and yeah. this was number one because you don't yeah you don't see them very often but you do see them from time to time and they eat they eat clownfish they eat nemo ryan for god's sake and well, I, I used this article in that video and i'm sure it says something about clownfish i put um so that's in one of the tanks at the moment yeah and in particular they attract then consume clownfish ryan you're nice. you're promoting corals that eat nemo <laughs> I need to get rid of this because I'm never going to be able to sell it, am I? Because no, no one's going to want it. Um, and I, to be fair, that's the sort of thing where I'd feel bad, like yeah. <laughs> letting someone have it. Put it in um, a mystery box. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I considered. No, I didn't really consider it. Which, I, um, which, what does it look like? Any any of these? Uh, it's hard. It's hard to see because oh, they're yeah, small okay, pictures. It's, it's it's actually like it's quite a nice like sort of creamy color. Um, it doesn't look as ugly as, as the pictures you're showing. That, that's cream, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That looks that looks like someone sneezed on your computer screen. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So who wants to buy this? It's not on the website at the moment. But if you want to buy it, you let me know. Other than that, it's going to go in the bin probably. <laughs> do not buy it. Well, don't throw it in the bin, but do not no, buy that. It's coming to your house. Bloody um, is <laughs> 
I it's, it's the funny thing is like it's in the tank it's in one of the tanks at the moment it's actually in the tank where your fish are going in um at the moment which is funny <laughs> um yeah, exactly. and I wait I fed all the cough bands every day I feed all the cough bands by hand and check up on them check all their weight and everything make sure they're all good make sure they're eating and I got to that tank put the food in nothing that the, the cough band just did not show up and I was like yeah. that's weird it's always here so why is it like why is it not showing up? Um and it just and it just didn't come out. And I thought, is that a mushroom eating it? Because <laughs> uh. even though the mushroom's only small, but then the next day I the the cob band's fine. I don't know why it didn't come out that day, and it was feeding the next morning. Okay. Uh, it was obviously busy doing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I I'm gonna interrupt just briefly. That's right. Because so I've just seen that um, Kalamazoo Reefer uh, basically made the same point as I was making about the battery backups. And the reason I'm mentioning him is because so he's, uh, he's, he's, he's runs a YouTube channel. He's just hit a thousand subscribers. This is the YouTube channel, Kal Kalamazoo Reefer. Um, and I discovered this recently. YouTube served up a, um, a, a video that, um, that caught my eye. And you can see I've watched a few of his videos now. He's really good. He's well worth checking out. He's, um, he's a, a, what um, Telegram would call sans bs <laughs> so he's just uh like a, he's not like a, he's not trying to be an influencer yeah um, his videos are really interesting just uh vlog style sort of stuff he posted some stuff about the battery backup this one um and he's he's calc he's a calc fan who doesn't love calc uh, are, you, uh, are you fangirling at the moment a little bit fangirling i'm fanboying yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah he's really good uh, he's well worth. I, I stand by my statement. <laughs> oh, God, but he's 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 one of those channels that probably goes under the radar that you probably won't see unless one of his videos like Calquasa comes up or whatever. Well worth checking out. There and you go. Go and He makes videos a lot more frequently than you do. <laughs> true. True. Mm -hmm. Well, most so. people do. <laughs> yeah, this is true. It's not not difficult, is it? Uh, current of the week is done. Then we're going to move on because it's very near. We've got news to do. Bloody hell, Ryan, we're, we're yeah. behind time. Right, news. <laughs> so first off, uh, oh, this just in. The power had to stop working. Oh, that, thank you for that. I was I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight not knowing that. Five hours, 57 minutes. So it's just under six hours. Stop. So it'd be 12 if it was fully charged. Uh, prob I don't think it was half charged. Anyway, whatever. Call it six hours. Um, so Ultramarine. There's a new... So in the UK, there is a, a coral magazine called Ultramarine. There is a new uh, edition out. This actually came out last week. I'm, I, got a, I bought a year subscription. I, don't know, I think this is my last one maybe a year ago but uh there's a new ultramarine magazine out so if you want a magazine about reef keeping go and get it you can buy it for most local fish or not most local fish but plenty or you can get it online how much is it i can't remember how much um i paid for the subscription doesn't say on the cover i think it's about four quid so typical magazine price and you won't find another a better um uh, sort uh, of magazine. i was gonna say it is a it is a good one um <laughs> Because there character. are other there are other magazines. There's a few other ones, but I find that one to be the most sort of advanced. I'm not sure mm -hmm. advanced is the right word, but you, you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So contributors include Mike Paletta. He's done articles on this. Um, very, Dr. Paul Anderson this week from OATA, Ornamental Aquatic Trade Association. There's some really they've got some in this one this week, they've got some really nice tanks. Um, like long established thing. I feel like the, these these are, this is probably read by people who've been in the hobby longer, and I think they don't aim aim at um, like uh, junior people as such. But it's it's well worth a read. If you've never read it, go and uh, go and buy it. Remember that uh, time that I was in Ultramarine magazine? You weren't in it, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't. My tank was in it though. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we'll move on from that. Uh, we'll come back to that another time. Second piece of news, and this was I got an email this week from red sea which probably everybody did uh they brought out a new or well so they brought out their g2 range of tanks oh, six months ago maybe and they've applied that g2 ness <laughs> to their nano series so there are three nano tanks and ryan you love nano tanks don't you love a nano tank yep and these are 75 liters 100 liters and 125 liters they're roughly the size of the cade over my shoulder all slightly different dimensions but roughly that kind of size so that's a an idea they cost between 950 quid and 1170 quid if you buy it with a cabinet you can buy it without a cabinet um 
And there were, they just look nice. They're just red tea tanks. The couple of things that I pointed out that I was going to mention, five-year warranty. It's a three plus two. So you get a three-year warranty and then you have to register to get the two years. Loads, CJ do that. They're, CJ are often uh, stated as having a five-year warranty. It is, but you've got to register it. Anyway, I digress. Um, uh, it's literally just sending an email saying, I've got one of your tanks. You just have to sign up, I think, yeah, and pr pr provide proof of purchase. But no, I, I mentioned it because, no, I never do that. I can never be bothered. Yeah. If I bought a tank, I probably would do, to be fair. But anyway, um, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, and they've got, they, they come with a CJ skimmer and a CJ, CJ powered skimmer, sorry, and a CJ return bump. Uh, and they uh, are they they will work with the Red Sea Auto Top Off and the new Red Sea Nano filter roller, which is coming. We talked about that a week ago, which I know you'll love because you love equipment. True. Uh, and Aqua H, this was um, a photo I saw this week. Aqua, Aqua, Ryan. Um, this was a photo they posted on on Facebook, and this is the first time I've seen the hall that this event will be. Yeah, it's this massive. Is, this is the UK's, uh, the, the coral show that's coming in September this year. Uh, corals, reptiles, all sorts of stuff, but it'll be saltwater stuff. That place is huge. This is this is the NAEC in Stoneley. So it's in the Midlands. Uh, so if you haven't bought your ticket, go and buy your ticket. <laughs> They're only 12 quid. 12 quid for a day. It's a mental. Even and if, you, don't, even if like, you bought it and then didn't go, I mean, yeah. it's like, it's not going to break the bank for most yeah. people, is it? completely so uh, but anyway but that was the first time i've seen the hall and it looks huge imagine and when when it's empty it always looks um smaller so when that's full of vendors and stuff that'll be huge yeah <laughs> and me and you were going for a beer afterwards with an invite extended to everybody so <laughs> so we're, we're, there's gonna be a hundred people <laughs> end up at a pub somewhere imagine if like 500 people went <laughs> i think 500 people do you even think 100 people would be interested in us well, no, no, but I mean, interested in going for a beer with a load of fish mates. That's true. Actually, think about it. We could do a live stream in person on That's one right. of the nights. If you if you bring the equipment needed to set that up, we'll do it. No, I don't want to do a live stream where other people watch it. You. you have to turn up to see it. It's a special live stream. Oh, I see. Right. I thought you were anyway, whatever. Um, just to talk to each other in person. <laughs> uh, but that's aqua, aqua. Aqua. Oh, ultimately, it's £25 a year for like £2.50 per copy. No, it's actually quarterly. So you get four a year. You get one every three months, I believe. Um, <clears throat> oh, I can find out. Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, would Aqua be bigger? Be, uh, you might be talking to someone else. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Aqua. Go to Aqua. And the last piece of news is the headline. So if you've just clicked on this video because you saw the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Sat through one hour, 52 minutes just to get to this moment uh and this is and i'm going to ask you this actually i'm going to ask now if you're watching this live in fact even if you're watching it afterwards post in the chat or the comments how much you would pay for that fish now this is a a white scope ass tank i'll give you a bit of context first off because it's a very i've never seen a white scope ass tank like that the closest i've seen is the white yellow yeah, tank which is yeah. casper of wwc fame but i've never seen a fish like that uh first off Ryan, how much would you pay for that fish? Mm, well, how much would I actually pay? And I, I'm actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna preface this now because if, if, if the person who's bought this or the shop he was selling this is watching, this is not a fair representation of what. No, this is just a representation of how tight we are. <laughs> this is two decades down the pub talking about a fish that is clearly not aimed at us. No one is. They are not marketing that at me, so yeah. I'm not the intended customer. So. I reckon it will probably be like fifteen thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, and I think the most I would pay for it would be a thousand pounds. I reckon. I think it said five figures. I don't think it actually said the price. It might not have even said that. No, I don't think it says that. But what what did you say? Sorry, how much? I said I, I assume it's going to be fifty at uh, ten to fifteen thousand dollars, <laughs> but for me, a thousand pounds is probably the most I would be going for on a on a fish. So no. I actually think that's that's quite a bad photo because it's not like a it's not that looks like a mobile phone photo and it's kind of just it looks like someone's just gone, I'll just take a photo quickly. So I think it will probably look better in real life than it does in that photo. Sorry if you took that photo and you're watching. No offense. <laughs> We're upsetting um, loads of people in this last five minutes, aren't we? <laughs> but I think I think the point is it will look better in real life. I still wouldn't want that. But I think it's cool, and I do like completely white fish. Like the, what's the the Genicanthus? 
you can have that Personatus boring white one you've got already. You know that rabbit fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personatus is it? Personatus angel. Uh, I know which one you're it's talking white, about. I think yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're really cool, and the bandit angel is really cool. Yeah. I think that I think those fish are cooler than that tang. Um, so you you would would you pay? Would you actually want that fish? I would have that fish, and I would pay a thousand pounds for it. Yes, definitely. Interesting. Um, okay. It's it's something that's it's quite unique, and as I said, when you've been in the hobby as long as I have, you like unique stuff, and yeah. you might not spend you might. So other people might spend a thousand pounds on other things, like lots of little things. Whereas I'd rather have one big thing that, if you see yeah. what I mean, and not get loads of little ones. I had that same conversation with someone today about corals, and I prefer. I sold a, a single frag of pink lemonade aqua. It was an inch tall, and it yeah. was one hundred and twenty-five quid. And uh, we were discussing it, and it was like, I, and I decided because I bought it for a little bit more than that originally. And I decided I would rather have one really nice coral than five like barley green slimers or whatever that I don't really yeah. into. Not that they're bad corals, but just so I, I'm with you. I, I wouldn't pay more than a grand is, is, is more than I would pay for that. But I don't yeah, like we, we feel differently <laughs> about tangs and fish. <laughs> exactly. But I think I I could see five or six hundred quid. I would say, you know, that's my first offer. <laughs> so so if you think about it, so six hundred pounds is the same amount of price as an Achilles. And Achilles, you can basically get relatively like if it's they're seasonal, I think. But if you want one, you can get one. Whereas you can't get a white tang. But I don't want a white tang. I'd rather have an Achilles. <laughs> so, and that's the whole point of this: is that we're not the. This is not targeted at us. Well, it's targeted at me. I'm just tight. <laughs> I mean, this is true. But that's that's the sort of thing that if um that, like if you if you like rare fish like Polo Reef, he likes rare fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying he's going to pay ten or fifteen grand for it, but. A fish like that comes up, that's like catnip. That's so, the sort of fish that he should have in his tank, actually, because yeah. um, he hasn't got an all white one. But some of them, they don't stay all white. That's the other problem. Sometimes that's they go the back. Thing. Imagine, Imagine if spending if a that ended up like a scopus. Like yeah, I know. Scopus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like a 30 quid scopus. But yeah, but it's, it's five and a half inches long, it says. So that's, it that doesn't mean it's not going to go change color when it gets older, but that's, it's quite mature already. So. Polo yeah. does have a has oh so I can't think she said Polo has a white Picasso De Giardini not anymore it's now oh, mostly changed, it's it? mostly changed back to a normal one unless it's changed back to white but I remember the last time I saw it he he put a video out once saying he's not going to get those sorts of fish anymore because they change color um, yeah, yeah 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 he said often yeah. that they revert back to normal coloration so it's a lot of money to, not maybe not completely but the, you'd be gutted wouldn't you you would yeah um okay so let's see what people are prepared to pay for it there's going to be some there's going to be some hurtful comments in here if you're watching this if you this is your <laughs> i know I apologize not. but 200 quid that's a decent start um, you compare it to another fish that costs 200 pounds and oh, remember this is this is one of a kind so what's another fish that costs 200 pounds 20 quid mm, 150 so, well think bucks. about it a 200 pounds is less than a yellow tang these days <laughs> two dollars okay come on there was there was a better comment actually 10 pounds and a freddo <laughs> well freddo's uh, they got up in price haven't they yeah really expensive <laughs> now uh on a three dollars three pound 45 in 5p coins uh but there were more so over 10k sold for five figures 300 250 500 Assume 10k. I think it'll be 10k. We'll probably sell for over 20. I don't know if it'll go for 20, but I yeah. think anyone who's who's put, putting it under that, like under a thousand, is not thinking about. So people going, oh yeah, 200 pounds. You can't. You can get. You can't even get yellow tang for for 200 pounds now. So you, how not, can you yeah. comp compare them? Yeah, but you're not. That's not the question. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not asking a protective buyer what they'd pay for. I'm just asking Joe Public. And, and said most... six pound seventy nine and some Xenia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but and yellow tang is much prettier. It is. Mm, uh, it's interesting because I so I actually think like I have a yellow tang in the water box, but I'm not like it doesn't make it doesn't make you feel anything. They've been around seen them a million times. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. So yeah. and some of some of the desire is based on rarity as well. It's based for for me these days, especially. Is based on rarity um so a yellow tang it's funny because people 
that weren't interested in yellow tangs of four are now interested in them because they're more expensive. <laughs> it's yeah, like, exactly. it's like, why you didn't want them before. <laughs> oh yeah. It's fancy. Um, yeah. But to be, to be fair. So I, obviously that fish is not, I'm never going to buy that fish. It's not aimed at me. It's not caught with people, people like me in mind. It's not caught with 99% of people in mind, but I like that. I like when they find that sort of stuff and it is cool because uh, yeah. it's so different. Like you see a yeah. normal scape us tank, they're just boring and brown. That is, that is proper white. It's not just like got patches on it. It's proper white. <laughs> if it was guaranteed to stay that color, which obviously it, it isn't, and it was guaranteed to live for 30 years, <laughs> which obviously it won't, as in I can't, you know, there's no guarantee yeah, yeah. of that. I would probably, I might go up to 1,500, 2,000. But look, this is very, very unlikely. I, I've never bought a fish that's like that, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah. But as in, I think it is worth that, is what I'm trying to say. Because, yeah. Like, you think you it's worth get, two grand? Yeah, because you just can't get them anywhere else. Look at look at those Yerple tangs and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it's, this is, I think, I actually think that that's a, a, an appropriate price. Um, but someone oh, will pay crazy money for it. That's better than a Yerple. Yeah, that's what I mean. And Yerples were like crazy prices. The Yerples have got potential, but they've never seemed to have achieved that. Whereas that, you buy it straight <laughs> away. You don't have to hope that it goes white. It looks awesome instantly. Think of it. Think about it this way: a Rolex is a watch. I have a watch which costs like 150 quid. They both do the same thing, but uh, whereas a Rolex might be like 20 grand or Rolexes 50, are I'm... actually worse if they're if they because the, like, the nice ones aren't battery powered, and that means they lose time. So they're worse than a, a normal watch that costs 10 quid. <laughs> but people want them because of rarity or because exactly. of prestige or because and that's what that fish is. It is a exactly. rare and prestigious fish. So that's why I believe it is worth more than the 200 pounds or bit of Xenia that Les was offering. <laughs> I can't put it better than that. So we should end on that point. Yes. Okay. And it's two hours. So uh, thank you all for watching, guys. Uh, we're going to do um, Ryan's DIY recipe for dosing. So if you want to save cash, come back next week and we'll talk about that. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Cheers, guys. Bye. Okay. See you later.